Well, hey, first of all, I want to say thanks for doing this, man. I appreciate it. I know we've been trying to do this for a couple of weeks now. Um, and congrats on the blue belt. I mean, that's uh, that's awesome. That's oh. from what you described. That sounds like it wasn't easy. Like it wasn't just a gimme. Well, especially we. <laughs> You always try to start things new, right? Or uh, try something new, I guess I would say. Um, and I don't know why I got a wild hair up to uh, do that. And uh, <laughs> so it was, it was about a two and a half hour test altogether. It's uh, at Lovato's and uh, they do a fantastic job. And yeah, they beat the crap out of me. <laughs> it, it was like a gang initiation. Like I got jumped in or something. <laughs> You know, nice. like here's a blue belt and a black eye. <laughs> right. Welcome to the club. So, yeah, you seem pretty exhausted after you're like, I, we got to postpone this, man. We can't. They- yeah, there was one guy um, in particular. He was the very last guy uh, they sent after me, and he is just a gigantic dude. And uh, I was exhausted. I tried to hip toss him, and uh, I felt like a like a condemned building just crumpled <laughs> right there. <laughs> he just smashed me. So, oh. yeah, I appreciate the uh, – uh, give me a little leeway there on that. Yeah, yeah, I thought I sure. could go No, and like I said, and please forgive me. I got a little bit of a cold, so I, I'm a little under the weather. But um, <clears throat> I really can't thank you enough. Cause I know it, it takes a little bit of time to sit down and, and go over this stuff. And I, I can't thank you enough for, for doing this with me. Um, I figure we've I just appreciate you having by, me. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah. I mean, um, uh, your career is so interesting. I it just I was just looking at it again today just to kind of re- refresh my memory. And it's just... You've done a kind of, we've done similar stuff uh, and it's, it's kind of um, a cool thing to be able to sit down and talk with you and kind of hear about those stories and, um, you know, especially about Iraq. So why don't you just go ahead and and, um, tell me about what prompted you to get in the military and then we can just go from there. We'll just start going chronologically with your career. Oh yeah. It uh, all began in 1974, Danville, Illinois, when I was born. (laughs) You're from Danville? That's crazy. I'm from Lincoln, No, I'm not Illinois. from Danville. I was oh. born in Danville. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I'm from Indiana, so but we had to cross state line because the town I'm from, uh, unless I wanted to be born like Jesus in a manger, that was the closest hospital. Oh, okay, okay. And I hope I don't offend anybody by saying that. So, <laughs> Well, we all think you're Christ-like, so it's fine. Well, as a mediocre Christ, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe not the Christ, but like a Christ of some sort. Well, yeah. Oh, God. Um, well, so <laughs> I got a just normal upbringing and, uh, you know, you know, small town and stuff like that. And uh, there wasn't a whole lot of options. And I didn't really uh, a lot of the a lot of the guys went off to college and, and did this or technical schools and um, kind of really just wanted to go in the military. I wanted yeah. to do something special. So. But I didn't know there was not a, not a lot of resources to research that, right? Uh, and as you know, <laughs> probably on the same time frame, the recruiters like to uh, spin tales of <laughs> For what sure. the special guys are. Right. Um, and uh, they told me that um, Air Force cops was the place to go. So yeah. I was like, oh, okay. So I got on the delayed enlistment program. Um, <laughs> now I'm not. I'm not saying that the cops are bad. I got a lot of good friends that are Air Force cops, but sure, sure. it really wasn't what I was looking for. So I go through MEPS and they give me the death perception test and I failed it. Oh, no. Which is crazy because yeah, I yeah. You know, ended up attack P. What I think happened was the guy was in such a hurry because it was his lunch hour <laughs> that he right. said, he just looked at me and said, yes or no? <laughs> I was like, uh, no. And he's like, yeah, you failed. Oh, jeez. So, right. Yeah. It's because MIPS, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, bend over and take it in so many ways. Right. right. Um, so I get, I get to basic training and, uh, and these guys show up in the red and the maroon berets and, uh, I try out for it and I swam in high school. So, uh, the swim test and everything was pretty easy and Mm -hmm. I was in pretty good shape. So I, uh, I get picked up. Uh, to get on uh, one of the teams, right? The NDOC course. Oh, cool. And I go through all that. I've got about a week left. Uh, it was balls two, um, 92. And um, I drowned um, or what they call self-eliminated. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> they get me out of the pool. And uh, I was like, I'm not getting back in there. Uh, then they kicked me back in the pool. A different time back there sure. now. 
I mean, yeah, uh, oh yeah, right, yeah. So wait, so um, you were you were just like doing underwaters or something, and you just and you were just well, pushing too hard, and you remember what, what bobbing was? Sure, sure, yeah, yeah. So they had the lead belt, and then uh, you had to put the the tank on, and uh, it had no air, and I had to put the fins on, and um, you know, I'm 18 years old, and um, <laughs> I did. I guess I just didn't have the leg strength or the the will, uh, the maturity. Uh, just to push through it. And I kept getting close to the surface of the water and I was going to go right there. And I just go back down. I ran out of breath oh my God. and uh, started trying to wiggle out of the tank. And uh, Sergeant Maltz, I'll never forget this guy, um, PJ, um, they may rest in peace. He, uh, he, he died. Uh, he was killed in action in Afghanistan in uh, March of 2003, I believe. Oh, okay. um, so r- really great guy, but you know, they got their job to do, right? Sure, sure. Uh, so I, I feel the shove in the back and I just let the rest of that, my air out. And uh, uh, I had to take that long walk yeah. uh, to uh, to the commandant's office. So <laughs> I get over there and uh, I, I'm feeling low. You know, this is what I wanted to do. Uh, I thought I was going to end up in some job I didn't really want. And John McKay is there. And, uh, John McKay had, uh, uh, they didn't have a tack P position there, mm-hmm. um, but they made one for him at that time, uh, because I, his wife was going through cancer treatment uh-huh. at that time. So, uh, I get up there and John McKay's in there and he looks at me and I, do you know J Mac? I, I, I know kind of of him. I, I don't know if we've ever met before, but yeah, yeah I, I know who he is. Really tough dude. One of the, yeah, original one of the best OG tack P's one of the best guys ever. Yeah. And he's got that gravelly voice and right. uh, he goes, he goes, Hey, you like to do all this stuff. And, uh, but you, you don't want to do scuba. <laughs> I was like, uh, yeah. Uh, uh yes, Sergeant. And he goes, <laughs> well, do you or don't you? I'm like, uh, I do. He goes, well, come on. <laughs> You're going to be a tack P. I'm like, okay. So we're walking. And, and finally, I'm like, hey, uh, hey, Sergeant, what's a TAC P? <laughs> no idea. Yeah. Like most of so, us at that time had no idea what that was. Yeah. It, it, was a, it was the best kept secret in the Air Force. So, right. Taking me through the whole thing, uh, gets me to, uh, to this, you know, I get to the schoolhouse. Uh, uh, other washout, Aaron Gibbs uh, was with me. And, uh, man, it, it was a great time. Tech school was a great time. We, uh, it was in great shape because of the OLH, right. Uh, from the combat control PJ course. So, uh, running was no problem. Um, I used my smart ass mouth to get as many push ups as I could. <laughs> yeah. And all right. I, I held on to that honorable orb like it was mine. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I constantly had that thing. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, now, like I said, I don't want to call anybody out, especially past guys, but there was a particular chief there at that time. Um, I think a lot of the tack piece had a lot of friction with him. Um, uh, you had uh, Carpenter and a bunch of the other guys, DeBruzies, who were instructors and stuff mm-hmm. like that, Avants. Yeah, and yeah. They, um, um, we had an air, airborne program. Right. And I was in the airborne program, and it was me and uh, two other guys, Aaron Gibbs and uh, J.J. Salisbury. Okay. And – we were, uh, we had made everything, passed all the tests, all the flight physicals and everything. And we were on, on route after tech school to go to Benning and, um, go to airborne school. Right. Right. So, uh, the, uh, the chief at that time, uh, said, uh, he did not believe that tech P's should be jumpers and canceled everything. They I think I might know who you're talking about. I think, yeah. And I, like I said, I don't want to. You know, he was very anti jumper for sure. He, had, yeah, he had, a, he had a yeah, very weird. Sure. So it sent me on a different career path. Uh, you know, what could have been, but, um, honestly, I have no regrets those decisions because it would have never led me to where I am now, it would have never led me to meet my wife and uh, have a, have the family I have. And, uh, so, right, I can't regret that at all. <laughs> yeah, I can only hate sure. him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just I know a lot of guys will they'll get to the end of their career and they'll look back and they're like, man, if I could only do it this or that. But they 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 fail to look at like you just said, they fail to look at the good stuff that has happened in their life. Oh, absolutely. You know, just be thankful for that. So yeah, I mean, you never know what could have happened. I mean, you would have got jump school and some catastrophic could have happened or it could have been horrible. You know. So yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was only like it only took me ten years to get over. So. <laughs> 
Not bad. Uh, not bad. Yeah, this is a pretty good time frame. Um, I, I've met some of the, the some of the best and most colorful people in this career field. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, looking back and uh, love every experience I've had, good and bad, with the, the tech piece that I've encountered, and uh, even outside of the career field, uh, the people I've encountered. So it's been it's been it was a really great career. Yeah. And I really appreciate everybody was there. Um, that either uh, you know everybody has an influence on everybody no matter what rank you are uh no matter where you are in your career um when, I, when we were out at ntc you know uh you have senior airmen come up and go through one of our our lanes and uh you know the guys who've been to combat and stuff like that and this guy hasn't been anywhere yet yeah, yeah. and he goes and crushes something and you're, and you're like holy crap that's a great idea <laughs> then you want <laughs> right. to talk to him like, hey man how'd you come up with that <laughs> that's a really good idea bud yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, you got you you got out of tech school. Your first assignment was Fort Lewis, right out of out of um, yeah, Fort Texas. Lewis. Okay. Fort Lewis. Um, and it was uh, they had closed Fort Ord down, and uh, they moved some of the guys there. A lot of the uh, other equipment, some of the equipment was there as well. But uh, I, you know, I didn't know much about Fort Ord. Uh, I know that it was in California. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. The guys really regretted that. They said it was one of the best kept secrets. That's what I hear too. I heard it was really nice and yeah. Yeah. Like it was really, really sweet, but you know, what did I know? So <laughs> right. brand new guy, youngest guy in the unit. Um, uh, man, they, you know, everybody gets been out of shape about hazing yeah. now, but, uh, you know, man, I think I got taped every other day. <laughs> I, I was I was taped up to something. At one point, they had taped me to a chair and put me in the middle of an intersection. And the base commander, um, General, I forget his name, uh, I guess called the unit and said, hey, uh, you know, grab your airmen. <laughs> so the MP showed up. We, they didn't even untape me. They just wheeled me back in. Sure. Uh, yeah. And the guys were like, yeah, sorry about that. We'll, we'll not put him out in the middle of the intersection anymore. So uh, Such a different time. I mean, it, that would have been... There'd have been firings and court martials and everything else that oh. happened nowadays, but oh god, but, yeah, they get your guy on the street. Yeah, well, I got I got taped to the commander. Uh, <laughs> the the craziest one, I got taped to this guy. So back in those days, uh, you know, they were having a hard time getting people in TAC P. Yeah, right. I like, think I think in the eighties and stuff. So they forced a lot of career fields to retrain. And when I right, say right. forced, uh, like. Uh, the red horse guys, the CE guys, uh, there's a lot of uh, supply guys and, uh, other guys, which made it great because they were real handy with the jobs that they had before. So they really sure. knew how to, you know, work the system, uh, yeah, as yeah, far yeah. as uh, to get the things that we needed. But we had one particular guy and they called him launch, uh, because <laughs> for whatever reason he was fired. He used to be a guy that worked on the, the missile, uh, the, the nukes, Oh, the oh, really? Right. Yeah. So for whatever reason, they fired this guy. I think I know why. <laughs> um, so hey, best thing to do is make him attack piece so they could hide him on an army post. That would be right, that's right. awesome. Good job. <laughs> yeah. So this dude, this dude had no less than like 50 damn knives on him all the time. <laughs> so these guys tackle him one day and they they're taping him up and he's losing him, losing it, just losing his mind. Yeah. So I'm standing there. Uh, like an idiot, like an 18 year old idiot that I was like, yeah. oh, I guess at least I'm not getting taped. But then they grab me and <laughs> tape me to him. So, and then they go off to the break room to have a drink. Right. So we're laying in the parking lot like this. And uh, he looks down at me <laughs> in a kind of a fatherly kind of voice. He goes, reach into my cargo pocket. You'll find a folding blade, take it out, cut yourself free. <laughs> and I'm like, I've got to get myself out of this first because this guy's going to kill me. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> so I find it and do this little Jason Bourne thing and <laughs> get out of that, cut him loose. He gets all the stuff out and he goes, puts his hand out. Now at this point, I don't know if I should give him the knife back. All right. Because I didn't know if he was going to go into that room and start <laughs> slicing people up. Right, right. So I did the right thing. I gave him the knife back and then went home. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> so, hey, whatever happens after that, that's none of my business. Yeah, I see nothing. I don't know. <laughs> I'm innocent. But yeah, uh, 
great group of guys. Um, I think Boyer, Art Boyer. Yeah, good was guy. A tech sergeant then. Uh, he was our, uh, we had regiments, so I was under uh, two nine at the time before they went to Korea. Okay. And um, he was, uh, he was always taking me out and training me. Uh, he, he was such a great NCO. Yeah. Uh, he wasn't necessarily my direct line supervisor, but he was, uh, he was definitely out there training me. He was teaching me how to, um, we would do this thing where we would um, nav out in the, uh, the range yep. and we would shoot a point and then we would run as fast as we could. Nice. Um, a lot of times I hit trees <laughs> because apparently I didn't know that you had to go around them. Right. <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> you can edit that as you see fit. Um, so one day we were out there and uh, I, I got through the brush and there's a, there's a family on the range um, having a picnic. It was a crazy <laughs> thing. Yeah, yeah. And they, you know, it's early nineties. So they got, you know, the camcorder, like that big, you know, it's right, like right. A television studio. <laughs> and the lady goes, Oh, look, an army guy. And she wheels this thing around and you know, hey, Sir Boyer <laughs> comes out. The kids are playing with UXOs. Oh my God. Uh, he's like, Hey, how did you get out here? And they're like, Oh, the, the gate was open. Well, what what happened was uh the soldiers uh they they'd lock these gates, but the soldiers so they could get in to work quickly cut the locks oh, okay. so they could get to work faster. Cause it's an easier way. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so then just some, some family from Seattle, just, you know, wandering out there. It's like, <laughs> Oh, Hey, look at that. <laughs> this is boom. That's a, you know, it, it, that didn't happen, but uh, you know, God only knows. It could have been, it could have been bad. Yeah. It could have been a lot worse. It could have been cause they were, they were uh, right on the edge there. They were pulling up stuff from the dirt that probably shouldn't be pulled up. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like, Hey, what's a circular thing? Yeah. <laughs> It's got fins Damn. on it. What is this thing? That's weird. Yeah. <laughs> Johnny, no. <laughs> Let's play catch. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. With the, uh, <laughs> what were they, the 57s and the 58s? Is, yeah, the CBUs uh, or whatever. Little, CBUs, yeah. The yeah. Little, <laughs> so, yeah, that was uh, that was a good time. So, I uh, then I after that, I put in for, uh, for Germany, and I got the ASOC. Okay. Um, and, and I know that's a, it's a filthy word in, in <laughs> TACP, but, uh, it, it was, it was great. Yeah. Um, I, I learned so much being at that level, um, being able to pick everything up, how to do airspace, all that stuff. And then, uh, we went to, uh, Bosnia. Okay. And, uh, I went to Bosnia in 96 in Sarajevo with the Allied yep. Rapid Reaction Corps. Um, that was a great time. Um, and I met, uh, Marissa Tomei. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. I, I don't know if she's still talking about this. I might have traumatized her. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but so where's Sarajevo? You know, everything's kind of calmed down at this point yeah. to some extent because NATO went in there. It was I-4, right. the implementation force. So everybody's kind of ceased their hostilities to, to some extent. Sure, sure. Uh, it wasn't until later on that Kosovo heated up. So... <sighs> Hollywood decides to shoot a movie, right? Uh, I think it was called Welcome to Sarajevo. So oh, okay. Woody, uh, what's his name? Woody Harrelson. Harrelson yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, Marissa Tomei. Huh. We didn't know this at all, right? <laughs> so we're walking around. Now, this we didn't have the gear on or anything like that. I had a, a holstered pistol, and that was it. Yeah, yeah. Right? So we're, we're down, and th these guys can make anything. They want that American money, so... We're walking down and I guess the translation would be leather street where they did leather workings and all kinds of stuff. And they were making shoulder holsters for people and stuff like that. So we're walking by and somebody goes, Hey, that's Marissa Tomei. I'm like, get out of town. What the hell's Marissa Tomei? Like, why would she be there? Yeah. yeah. Why would she be here? That's the dumbest <laughs> thing I've ever heard. So I go in there and of course she's got jet black hair. Well, so do Serbs, right? Yeah. So she's got her back to me. You got one guy is just, you know, kind of sitting there looking at me and uh, another dude who's possibly the hairdresser, but very happy to see us. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, a couple of guys will say, hey, cover me, you know. So I put my hand on her shoulder and whipped her around like this. Oh, my God. I know, right? <laughs> what, a, what an idiot. 
<laughs> again, I was young, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then I wa- since we were in a kind of a British sector, that's how the Brits would do things. Yeah. Right. To check people, they would just grab them and just like, hey, let me see this and that. Yeah. So taking that cue, uh, thank God it didn't follow me when I went to Iraq and just started just grabbing people. And <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, that was later on. Um, so as soon as she turns around, it's Marissa Tomei. Yeah. I'm like, but I can't help myself. And the words come out of my mouth. I'm like, are you Marissa Tomei? <laughs> and she goes, so smooth. Yeah. And she looks at me and she goes, yes. <laughs> well, I don't have any follow up to this. Right. The conversation with her. Uh, so I, you know, again, it kind of bubbles up and is like, do I have your autograph? <laughs> <laughs> you know, she tells me to wait outside. We don't have any cameras or anything. This is way before cell phones or anything. Yeah, yeah. But she goes outside. The ALO shows up. Uh, he's like, what, what, what's going on? I go, hey, it's Marissa Tomei. He's like, no way. So she comes out, starts signing things. She's, she looks like she's a nervous wreck. I, I don't think it's all me, but it might be 99.9% my fault. <laughs> so <laughs> it's kind of a... <laughs> That's a unique, a unique greeting that you laid on her, I'm sure. Yeah, you know, welcome to Sarajevo. Hey, what are you doing here? Yeah. So, <laughs> welcome. Uh, I never get an autograph. She just walked right past me, right? Right. And yeah. I'm, I'm thinking, well, okay, yeah, that was my fault. <laughs> so they walk off. So we're we we keep exploring the area and stuff like that, and uh, we see him again, and she does a quick head whip like makes eye contact with me and I'm like, Oh God. (laughs) And the captain says, Hey, let's, let's follow them. See where they're going. I'm like, yeah, that stars and stripes. (laughs) I four soldiers stock Marissa Tomei. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Right. We left her alone. Uh, So that, that same day meeting Marissa Tomei. And then we went over to, uh, to see where Archduke Ferdinand and his wife were assassinated at the start of world war one. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, what a fun field trip that was. Yeah. <laughs> you scared a celebrity and you saw the, the site of a, a ma- the beginning of a world nope. war. A little piece of history. We put it together. Nice. Marissa Tomei started World War One. Synergy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's good times. We, How was it over there? We, I mean, it was, like you said, it was kind of slowed down by then, but was, was there any kind of like, uh, I remember when we were there, it was just real peacekeeping type stuff and there wasn't a whole lot yeah. of thing, stuff going on. But I know the guy, I went there like, Four year, four months after the initial push, and I guess that that initial wave in there was like they got busy and did a bunch of stuff. But yeah, we were, we didn't do a whole lot. We we're just kind of like peacekeeping type stuff. Did yeah, you run you into any the, scrapes or anything? Or were you were part of the Cowboys? Yeah, yeah. Well, I was with uh, one quarter Cav. Um, okay. Out of uh, we were at Vilsec at the time, and then the only scrape I almost got into was with uh, a Scottish guy. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Scottish military um, or just, uh, yeah, he was military. We yeah. were, it's like, since the allied repression, every country is right there. Right. Sure. Sure. And the great thing about on the ASOC, we had to talk to every single person who'd sent up a sit rep and that needed air to train. Right. Sure. Sure. But there was a lot of people on the actual base that we were on. And this, uh, the Scottish guy, I don't think he was stationed there, but, uh, I- I'm walking, and he goes, hey, hello, hey, like it, like it, hello. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, what? Like the- <laughs> and he goes, oh, hey, hey, hey. And I kind of do the head tilt. And I and I could see he's getting ticked off, right? Yeah, yeah. So I do what every other country loves Americans to do. I put my hands up and I look <laughs> at him and I go, slow down. And then I slow my speech down. Yeah. And I go, you need to speak slower because I don't understand what you're saying to me. <laughs> and I just eyeball him. I wasn't yeah. being mean or anything. I was really trying to figure out what he was saying. Yeah. I mean, I thought this guy was going to just rip my head off. And then this, uh, this British officer's walking by and, uh, you know, I see an opportunity like, Hey, sir, Hey, I need your help. Blah, blah, blah. He comes over and he's like, Oh, yeah. oh what seems to be the problem here. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I, 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 I can't understand him which pissed him off even more. Sure. sure. And so like, why do you need a translator? Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> just translated <laughs> for the Highlands. Right, um, right. So he asks him, you know, you know, what's going on. And this guy's going off. I pick up some words like, uh, yank and 
uh, Pratt or whatever they call us. <laughs> and uh, he's, he's like, yes. And he just goes straight out here, take a left and a right, and you'll be on the circle. And then uh, you take a north out of the circle. And he's like, oh, hello, hey, 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 <laughs> you know. And then yeah, he yeah. gives me the stink eye, and then he walks off. And I was like, what, what did he want? And he goes, oh, uh, he just wanted to know the quickest way to the gate. It was like a, it was like a sitcom. It's so, <laughs> yeah. It's so funny how you you try so hard. You're like, just one more time. Just give it to me. I, I want to hear what you're saying. I know it's English, but just let me, just one more time. And they just get super pissed. Like, I'm speaking English. I think English. I can understand Chewbacca. I knew I can understand a Scottish guy. Right. <laughs> so the other thing we had was uh, the, the French threw us a birthday party, a 4th of July birthday party. Okay. And they brought in uh charlie daniels all right nice and they bought us a ton of american beer right nice so we're sitting there celebrating blah 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 the french actually jump in with the american and french flag <laughs> into sarajevo which i don't know how they authorize that but i don't know hey <laughs> so the brits are kind of ticked off right so they yeah. one they tried to they tried to steal our beer they tried to shut the the operation down yeah. And uh, and then we caught a couple of them uh, later on trying to steal our food. But <laughs> after that day, it was it was all back to ops normal. And sure, sure, sure. <laughs> I'm sure it was all in good fun. You know, like it, you know, it was it was really in good fun. They were great guys. They're great to hang out with. And and I have worked with the Brits uh, on so many different occasions, and that they're amazing people and uh, great soldiers. Yeah, for sure. So after that, you lose yeah. Germany. Went over to Sarajevo, and then how, you were in Germany two years? Uh, three years. Three, okay. Yeah, three years, uh, 94, 97. Okay. And I got uh, stationed at the 19th ASOS at Campbell after that. Oh, okay, cool. Um, I got to work with, uh, again, great guys uh, over there. Um, yeah, yeah. Got to do some work with um, uh, Larry Patton was with the 160th SOAR. Oh, that's right. That's right, yep. So... And, and I'm going to tie the Scottish thing in real quick. <laughs> so still pretty new guy, right? Yeah. Um, he takes us all out, uh, and the 160th is doing their thing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I, I, you know, Larry, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. So I'm gonna do my best Larry impression <laughs> for those of you who don't know who Larry is. Uh, think of, uh, uh, Mel Gibson, John Wick and Jason Bourne all wrapped into one. <laughs> right. So he goes, he goes, Hey, Aren't you that funny guy that does all those voices? I'm like, uh, yeah, I can do a couple of voices. He goes, he goes, well, guess what? You're up. You're SAS. <laughs> <laughs> so I get on there and I'm like, all right, this is what we got here. We got on the north side of the compound. We got a, I got a, oh, it's a BMP. It's coming right here. <laughs> I, need, I need support. I need it new. <laughs> he was cracking up, man. We yeah. just had a lot of fun with it, man. And, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, he's a great guy. That, yeah, he is a fantastic guy. I learned a lot from him. So I get uh, from Campbell, I go to I do a tour in Korea at Camp Casey, okay. and Larry's the uh, superintendent. I got Steve Mangum. Um, all oh these, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, all these great dudes over there, um, and uh, you know taught me a lot. I think I learned how to be a better uh, ETAC or later JTAC uh, being in Korea than any other place. Oh yeah, you know. And I just yeah. didn't bomb a bridge. Yeah. They probably wanted you to, but <laughs> they wanted me to. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you know how it went over there. You know, you, you see, you see, it's like, Hey, I want you to take that building out and you look at them and they've all got the same roof and they all look exactly the same. Right. Right. And you're like, Oh crap. <laughs> how do yeah, I do this? It's the most challenging cast that I've ever done. I mean, you just, you really, your talk ons have to be like the best to even, you know, get their, anybody's yeah. eyes on the target for sure. Yeah. And there's so much like, it's all dry, but it's, that's the best part of it because you can get so dynamic and yeah, it was, that was, you learn yeah, I learned so much over there as far as like cast goes. And plus oh, you got all those great. dudes, like you were saying, like Patton and Mangum, they, you know, I had the same, I had guys that were, that were older, that were mentors and you just get such a, uh, a good group of dudes, you know, cause they're coming from everywhere. So you get all kinds of, uh, you know, different experiences to hone your skills. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. I love Korea. I'd say the best part of that was, you know, we had guys from uh, the 14th, the 19th and the, and the soft community was most made up the majority of the time that I was there when I was stationed nice. there and uh, man, just, just spot on. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 
great group of dudes and uh sean mignon and oh yeah uh, yeah right yeah yeah sean's <laughs> it's awesome. when he was it's when he was still strong <laughs> i'm sorry sean you're still strong i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> so we had a great time we were actually um a guy named frank hope and i were in a movie uh oh, no kidding TV miniseries with larry Patton, who was a reoccurring character as i think dr smith wait there's a korean tv show it's a it was a, like a korean miniseries uh like miniseries movie kind of thing oh right? nice so they 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 patted us up in, in like Jack and stuff. Yeah. And we were supposed to come out. Uh, Larry had this guy's, you know, this guy was dying in his arms. All right, all right. And we were supposed to come out there, grab Larry, get him in the car and take off. Right. So the director, I think he was trying to say sirens because we were supposed to hear like sirens in the background coming. Yeah, we're yeah. supposed to look and then go grab Larry, you know, superb acting, you know, learned everything <laughs> yeah. I know from Marissa Tomei. Um, <laughs> right. So, the director goes, ambulance, ambulance, ambulance. And we just kind of look at him and he goes, oh, God. He was so pissed off. So we had like three or four takes, uh, but we finally got it. And we made like, uh, man, we made like 60,000 won. Oh, really? Just like 40 bucks. I was going to say, like, what's the uh, exchange rate on that? Yeah, it was like 40 bucks, man. But it was fun, man. We got to go out with the cast and all that. So. Oh, nice. Yeah. And these are all like Korean actors and actresses and all that, or were there any Americans? Yeah. Oh, uh, just, just uh, Larry Patton, who was a celebrity within that community, I guess. Oh, Dr. God. <laughs> yeah. But awesome dude. Um, yeah. And uh, that, then we, uh, we got, we got really drunk that night. Of course. Yep. Standard. Right. It's Korea. Yeah, sta very standard. And uh, so, and then uh, we go on what they call it. You, you know what a hash run is? Oh yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So, um, I don't want to get up. I'm so blitzed. And yeah. of course it's like four or five in the morning and Larry is kicking our bed. Like, get up, let's go. That's what we came out here to do. I'm like, I thought we came out here to do this movie. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. We're running. So we're running and the guy just, he just keeps going, man. Yeah. He's a machine. He's a machine. And, yeah. Uh, my buddy, because we're so hung over. I mean, his nose started to bleed. Oh I was, it was just like terrible. It was like dry heaving halfway through it. He's like, oh. let's go. Come on. He just, that's all he kept saying. So <laughs> how far was it? I, I really don't remember. Yeah. He just kept, you just put your head just down kept running. just kept going. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I couldn't even stop, you know, or Larry was right there. It was like a drill sergeant. I never sergeant. understood those, man. I was just like, I, why? I don't know what, I don't know what the fun is in those. I was like, uh, I'd either want to work out or I want to drink. I don't want to like do both you know yeah it's it's, yeah. It, it's dumb but uh <laughs> i guess uh still got out there and to, to do it uh because uh i think it's uh larry and uh you know mangum they all kind of they all had the, the same saying uh never go out like a punk ass bitch it's a good one yeah so yeah. <laughs> just get up and do it no matter how bad you feel <laughs> Yeah, those guys were uh, those guys were definitely old school. Where and I, I, where you and I are kind of still kind of old school, but where you would, you'd go out late, you get in at like three, like you said, three or four in the morning, and then get up for PT, and you would just do it. You know, it wasn't even now. I, I don't know if I don't know if I would do it the same now, knowing what I know now. I think maybe I would just like just try to build myself up better. But yeah, back <laughs> in the day, it was like you just. I mean, it was more like. You just kept breaking yourself down even more, even, but you would just keep going. I don't know. It was, it was, a yeah. rough, it was <laughs> rough. It was functional drunks in the air force. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. Yeah. Well, uh, the, the crazy thing about the, the Korea, uh, TDY. So when I was at Campbell, um, I'm, you know, born in Danville, but, uh, <laughs> raised in Indiana, I was going up to Indiana, uh, quite often, you know? The oh yeah. Yeah. Campbell. So, uh, one trip I, uh, I actually met my wife, crazy story within itself. Uh, yeah. I'm at a club and, uh, it's called circle center. Right. Okay. And, uh, Indianapolis, and I don't know if they still have this, but they had what they call black expo week. And it was to celebrate African Americans in the community. Okay. But what it turned out to be a lot of times with gang members would come out. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. So there'd be a lot of violence and stuff. And, uh, that's, Nothing, but that's just a fact. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, sure. So we, we went into this club, uh, 
uh, me and this other guy, and I, I won't name his name because I'm about ready to drop a drop a jerk moment. Uh, oh. <laughs> so, so we're we go up there, and uh, you know, uh, I see her, and they're playing this like '70s kind of mix music in there, and uh, it's uh, I think it was "Staying Alive." So you know, I was hitting the gym. I wasn't. I was. I was young. Yeah, I yeah. see her over there. She's pretending like she doesn't see me. So I'm rolling over there. I'm like, <laughs> hey, what's going on? And then boom, hit that. I can't do it anymore with my knees, but <laughs> boom. <laughs> I'm like, what's up? She walked away. I, I was like, well, that was dumb. <laughs> so, but I got she lucky. She didn't go for it right away. And no, you know, I, ridiculous. Those are my best moves. I can't believe best it. Moves. it doesn't best, make I know, sense. Unbelievable. It's like, <laughs> so uh later on she her and her friend come running up to me because there was a guy pursuing her friend and let me describe this guy he's wearing a three-piece suit and a fedora with a feather in it peach colored and he kept grinding his hands like this looking at her friend's booty yeah like he wants to make him he she, he wanted to make her part of his uh stable i think uh, we can I was, all i was gonna say what was going on yeah there. exactly so a, yeah so they they both said that they were with me you know i put on my best uh yeah and he goes he goes mad respect you know he just gives me a fist bump so i'm like what is going on right now <laughs> what is happening <laughs> what is happening right now so i got her i got her number and um i you remember the answering machines right yeah the answering machines and voicemails and stuff like that but it's all the same thing really so i don't talk to machines very well right and, I call her up and I said, Hey, uh, this is the guy that, uh, you remember the, uh, the, we were dan I was dancing and that move and the Pete's this, you know, just hang out. <laughs> so her friend tells her so smooth. Yeah. Real smooth. Right. <laughs> She's like, it definitely wasn't for my money. So, <laughs> so her friend says, he's a psycho man. Don't call him back. <laughs> but she did. And we ended up dating and, uh, ended up getting married and, we have, you know, four beautiful kids. Three of them are adults now. One's a 15 year old that can't stand me right now, but uh, that's yeah, that right. <laughs> so, well, congrats, yeah, good man. That's uh, that's good. That, that's uh, nobody would have thought after after those beginnings, you, you know, you could have, you know, been got to where you were. So that's awesome. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's why they call me Humble Mike. <laughs> right. I don't think anybody calls me that, do they? I was wondering. I'm like, I've never heard that. I yeah, I said, uh, maybe I just I can put that right here under Michael Shropshire. Like, yeah, yeah, just change Humble it. Mike. Yeah, that'd be the name of the episode. Humble Mike. Humble Mike. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, BS. Michael yeah. Shropshire. Oh, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, so I I I go to Korea. I come back, and I think it's the curse of being married in Tac P that I start getting all the crappy assignments. Yeah, so yeah, I got yeah. Fort Drum. Seven years at Fort Drum. Whoa. Seven freaking years. I could not get out of that place. What was the deal? Like, I mean, why were they so, using orders? Or? Well, so right when we got there was uh, November of 2000, right? Okay. So 2001, the war starts, and they kind of just locked everybody down in place. And we couldn't really move around. Yeah. And 10th Mountain was, they were going out there all the time. Either yeah, yeah. Were, you know, this or that. And, um, you know, or they were emptying the, the job for us to go with other units and stuff like that. So we oh, just right, really right. weren't moving around. So while, while, you know, we were deploying, you know, uh, the families that got stuck with the really great assignments got lucky. And then my wife had to endure winners at Fort drum. <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, it's not I too, don't. it's not too much. She's from Indiana or Indianapolis or Indiana. Yeah, she's from uh, uh, South Indianapolis. So, so she's so used we, to the kind of the cold weather. It's, it wasn't like she was from Florida or something, but still, Fort Drum was a different kind of cold. I mean, that's it was a different kind of cold. It man, one year it brutal. got with the um, wind chills like negative sixty. Yeah, I was like when people in, uh, from Alaska are coming down to train the winners <laughs> right. at Drum. I mean, that, <laughs> it's uh, like it's not cold enough where we are. We need to yeah. get down there where it's really cold. <laughs> oh, and it's so like. <laughs> It was like so bone chilling too. It wasn't like it wasn't just like cold. It was like man, it was just, hey, it was horrible. I didn't like. Yeah, it. I've only been there TDY, um, and it was bad. I didn't I didn't care for it. 
Well, they gave us snowshoes and skis when I first got there. I think nice. we used those once because I couldn't find the mountains anywhere. <laughs> right. <laughs> Why would you put this division here? I yeah, don't tenth, know. exactly. Yeah. Tenth, <laughs> what are they? Tenth Mountain? What? Yeah, because the elevation was like 720 feet. <laughs> exactly. So when the first group of guys went over to uh, Afghanistan, you know, they were they were sucking wind, man, <laughs> getting at eight, nine thousand feet up in the uh, mountains up there and yeah did you guys ever do any any did you go any tdys that would train in mountain terrain or i, I don't know what the story was behind it how that that unit got to that location but was there yeah. any kind of effort to do any kind of mountain stuff or was it just like just so later on I, I think they sent some of the guys to uh, colorado um and we started buying uh and you know this as well we started buying a lot of uh civilian equipment um yeah as far as boots and clothing and stuff like that, because it just wasn't the issued stuff just wasn't good enough. Right. So, uh, so our guys, uh, you know, we had, we had great leadership. Uh, you had Shaq Bushin, you had uh, Pete Donnelly, yeah, um, yeah. among, dudes. you know, and, and other guys that, you know, just amazing, um, NCOs there and, and, and leadership. And these guys were trying to get us to get us everything we needed. Yeah. Right. Um, but I will say, uh, we had the, uh, the pre-ranger guys and the air assault school that was right there. Nice. Um, so some of the stuff that we were doing, because when, when our guys first came back, uh, they said, Hey, we're, we're, we're hurting. Yeah. We need to get our physical shape way up <laughs> yeah, yeah. and we've got to, uh, we've got to learn small unit tactics because those dudes were out in the mix. Right. Yep. You know, like guys like Joe Wren and, and, and those dudes, Aki, Matt Aki, right, uh, right. Sean Lloyd, you know, all those dudes coming back and like, <laughs> we need to do something different. <laughs> right, so right. we were like, holy crap. Okay. So we all bought, um, and this is going to sound stupid, but this is what happened. Uh, we bought paintball guns and uh, went over the pre ranger guys and uh, just, you know, on our off hours, uh, they would train us in small unit tactics and we would trade them for emergency cast training. Nice. Yeah. No, I think that's smart. I mean, I mean, that's essentially what those guys are using anyway. It's just, uh, more sophisticated UTMs, you know, it's, but it's essentially paintball. So I think that, yeah. that was a good idea. I mean, that, cause there's no other way to, yeah, you can go out there and use blanks or, uh, or just do it dry, but there's nothing more, nothing like getting hit with a paintball to make you, you know, react accordingly. You know what I mean? It, it, it yeah. gives you that, obviously not the same feedback as a bullet, but it's going to give you some negative feedback to make you get low or, you know, take the proper precautions if you're in a firefight for sure. Well, definitely. I, I thought right. I was short enough to avoid all fire, but uh, apparently not. Thanks Joe Wren for that. <laughs> yeah. And Sean Farrington for punching me in the head with a paintball, by the way. Um, yeah. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, that was, uh, that's essentially what we did. Uh, and it, it really, uh, then we got on the, the, you know, early days of the internet, I guess it, it, it was kind of evolving fast. So, uh, special tactics.com had a, uh, uh, a website, right. And in that website, they had a ton of workouts. Yep. So we, we got on there and, uh, we would before PT, we would go, to the pool and do nice. the workouts uh, from specialtactics.com. And uh, then I don't even know if they're still up anymore, by the way. So hey, I haven't anyway, seen that so, website in a long time. Yeah, yeah, I haven't seen that either. <laughs> so uh, it just tells you my age right now. It's All like, right. And, you know, there's like, Wee! So we put the modem up. It was cool. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, a dial so, up. So he would dial up. Uh, <laughs> then we would go do regular PT um, with uh, ASOS and then at lunch we would go do the weight training and then after work we would go do a long long distance run or a um uh ruck nice and got us in some fantastic shape um mostly motivated out of uh we don't want to die on the side of the mountain right. kind of deal <laughs> yeah and uh I think we were all running about sub seven minute miles at that point nice. so it was, it was pretty good I mean, that's a peop that's a great point. I'm glad you brought that up because a lot of people think of, you know, guys who work out or stay in great shape as, uh, you know, they're, they're tryhards or they're trying to, you know, overachieve or whatever. But I'm like, it's, it's not that it, like you said, it, you don't want to, that, you don't want that to be the limiting factor when you're up against the enemy, you know, you want to be able, you want something else. You don't want that to be bringing you down. Not number one. And number two, you don't want to be the guy that is, 
holding up everybody else, right? So, you know, if, 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 if everybody else is in great shape and you're sucking, you know, that's a bad deal. So, no, I, I, I commend you guys for doing that. I, I wish, I think people, if they had that mentality, like, I don't want to, you know, I want to be prepared for combat. I think that would have been, I think a lot more people would work out like that, you know. So, no, good on you guys. That's, that's smart for sure. Well, a lot, it worked out for a lot of the guys. Um, I ended up uh, getting an assignment to uh, PSAB, Prince Alton Air Base, uh, at the KOC with the okay. Seoul, uh, Special Ops Liaison Element. Nice. And uh, okay. my job was to help the, the CAS cell. And this was at the end of 2002. Okay. So uh, at this, I'm still stationed at Drum, by the way. <laughs> so. Uh, How was that? Was that kind of a, an odd change from it was odd you know, like i'd never been around uh you know the operators there were already upset that they were there yeah uh, the special forces guys uh the seals the um combat control guys uh um, yeah, yeah. all these dudes they're very upset because their buddies are out there you know but i i looked at it like well my job is to make sure that the cast read the con ops and the op plan and all that stuff and make sure that the cast gets in the right place if they need it right right so that was my job i go down the castle i helped out the cast cell every once in a while but uh, i wasn't prepared for that place that looked like tom clancy's bathroom <laughs> which oh, was really? crazy <laughs> yeah it was nuts it was like stuff going on and i was like wow what is does anybody know what any of this is <laughs> it's like screens on screens and stuff yeah, yeah. they were they were um they were still doing um northern and southern watch in iraq at that point okay so yep. we hadn't nothing had gone down with iraq i mean there was a lot of threats going back and forth at that point so sure. they were still trying to run uh fighters down and, and test the waters every once in a while our guys would chase them down and stuff like that oh, okay we were focused on afghanistan um and I, the that's i really ran into the 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 innovative spirit of your green beret out there in right. Saudi Arabia, those guys <laughs> are awesome. <laughs> they can make anything. They can, they can do anything. Uh, yeah, it just they just know how to to go about it. So, um, we got um, you know, it's real comfortable. It was real comfortable there. I think sure. they reopened it again, but um, they had these uh, walls lined with uh, refrigerated uh, glass doors, and we had this. Uh, they had a chocolate chip cookie there. I know it's not a combat story, but it's close enough. Um, and they called it PSAB crack because okay. this cookie was so freaking good. Yeah. Right. So we're eating a late dinner <clears throat> in there. We just got done. Uh, there was an op that went down and, you know, we were kind of just in there after that. And so I'm sitting with all these, these hardcore dudes, man. I'm the only air force guy sitting there. I'm a staff sergeant at the time. Right. And this, this tech sergeant walks in and man, he is, going through each refrigerator we know what he's looking for he's looking for that damn cookie right. but the further on down the line he gets the more frustrated he's getting and the more huffy and the puffy and the red face he's getting <laughs> so finally one of the green berets uh you know because he can't help himself because he's still a soldier sure uh, says what's wrong air force can't find the cookies <laughs> so everybody has a good chuckle this guy turns around hones in right on me and says uh get outside now to me and i'm like oh god all right god. so i go to get up and the captain's just eating he hadn't said anything he just puts his hand on my shoulder and he sits me down and he goes um tells the guy he's like hey f off he's with us all right and i was like all right that made me feel really good yeah and no kidding probably went out somewhere on a flight line and had a heart attack or something <laughs> who was this guy who was the, was I, he did you know who any i mean had I you no talked to him before was. never saw him again <clears throat> so um uh, and then, he just got butt hurt and tried was gonna take it out on you or something <laughs> he really did and it was uh, uh jesse basher was the captain okay and uh he was uh after he was done with that time he was going to get his team nice and he was real psyched about it uh which is a big deal for those guys that, yeah. as captains, as you know for sure and um so but i, I felt really good about yeah. it yeah so so the war is coming up right yeah. I know the war's coming up, the invasion in Iraq, and I'm like, I don't want to go back to the States and have to fly all the way back over here. Oh, so yeah. I'll just – here. So uh, General Longoria, uh, well, Colonel Longoria at the time, right. Pete Donnelly, they're all there. 
so to back that up a little bit, so we had this uh, the the, the P- PSAB was a was a horrible place um, to be a young single female because everybody <laughs> there was, was so many dudes like trying to talk to you like, walk around like all this stuff. And yeah. we had this, uh, we had this, uh, in the replanter cell, there was this, uh, young 19 year old female, uh, her name's Sharon. And, uh, she was, uh, she was constantly getting hit on. I watched a Lieutenant walk right up to her and say, Hey, uh, you know, you want to go get some ice cream later? And blah, blah. this is in the <laughs> chaos floor. Oh my God. And, uh, at the time the chief, uh, was chief Tim Finn. Okay. And Tim Finn had more time in service and more time in grade than the chief master sergeant of the Air Force. Yeah, yeah. So he's the second highest ranking chief. And he turns his chair around like the Dark Lord of the Sith and looks at this lieutenant and like, hey, beat feet, guy. Yeah. And, uh, so she was always, uh, she would always attach herself to us because sure. we didn't do any of that stuff. And, yeah, like uh, big so brothers to her. A little bit more secure, Yeah. So one day, none of the guys are going to lunch, and uh, I decide to go to lunch. And she pops up. She's like, hey, I'll go with you. I'm like, oh, okay, come <laughs> on. So we're walking out. And just as I'm walking out the door, Pete Donnelly is coming <laughs> the other way. And he looks at me, and he looks at her. And he's stationed at drum, too. And I'm like, oh, uh, oh, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> It's not what you think. He's like, yeah, okay. He goes, just come talk to me later. And I'm like, oh my God, what a, uh, uh, no. <laughs> it had nothing to do with that. It had everything to do with the, the With the invasion. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, so when I tell that story, my wife said, my wife's like, he should have chewed your ass. <laughs> and I'm like, for what? I didn't do anything. Didn't do anything. This <laughs> yeah. innocent. So I go over there and, uh, he, you know, he asks me, he goes, hey, do you got the, you got soft train up? And I'm like, and remember, it was that two week train up, and then they would put you with a soft team. Oh, right, right. Yep. Yeah. And then there was guys that were normally with these guys. And later on, we got that more established. But um, at that point in time, there wasn't a whole lot of dudes. Uh, there, there was a core group of dudes, and then there were the dudes that needed to catch up. Right. Sure, sure. Uh, so I said, Well, no, I, I didn't get to the two week train up. And they're like, Okay, you want to be with the 101st or 3rd Infantry Division? And I'm like, No, nah, I, I kind of saw who was going where already yeah cheated and i said oh i'll go with 3id I'm like cool you knew they were going to get into it yeah i knew they were going to mix it up i didn't know i was going to be put with uh <laughs> the unit that has a reputation for getting surrounded but yeah <laughs> good, <laughs> good choices good yeah choice. <laughs> <laughs> so uh they they sent me um right from there and when i say they they said just find your way out there i'm like Cool. So I got these orders for Saudi Arabia, but it didn't matter. So I get with uh, Captain Basher and I said, Hey, this is where I got to go. I got to go out to uh, Camp New York out here. So he's like, I got to go this way. Cool. So we just start hopping rides. And we're just like airplanes just, or I, vehicle. Like what? Like what? How yeah, did you? Uh, what was, what was the, what was your... So it was a little bit of uh, uh, vehicles. It was a little bit of C 130s and there was so much movement at that time because everybody was getting in place and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah. So, uh, I, I end up at, um, Ali Asalim and, uh, Basher, <laughs> he goes, he goes, Hey man, I, I got a place where we could stay. <clears throat> so takes me into this tent and there's these, uh, dudes sitting around a map and they're all turn around and look at me. And these guys don't look like regular guys. They look like, yeah our special guys <laughs> yeah, and stands up. One of them stands up and uh, Jesse suddenly he's like, okay, I'll see you later. I'm like, well, what the hell, man? <laughs> and he goes, Hey, are you a, uh, you an ETAC? And I go, uh, yeah. Cause we, we were still in the transition. Sure, still sure. Hadn't solidified yet with them. Right. Right. And I said, yeah, he goes, okay, well, Hey, you're with us. Let's let me show you the plan. And I'm like, <laughs> uh, I said, well, That'd be great, but I I have to report to Colonel Reisner with 15th ASOS. And he goes, yeah, yeah, we'll make some phone calls. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> it's Nobody war, knows man. where I am. Nobody yeah. knows where I am. So they're they're telling me their whole plan, and I just want to go, no, 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 no. No, I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to know. <laughs> so 
they sounded like they had a solid plan because, uh, you know, at that time, 3rd Infantry Division was using, there was the guys that were going one direction and there was a lot of dudes that were kind of like the, the, the scout uh, reconnaissance for the 3rd Infantry Division sure. uh, for the armor. Right. So uh, it was, uh, it was they're, they're, you know, dual hat and a lot of stuff. So uh, it looked, it, it sounded like a really cool mission, man. You know, pick up trucks and do what you want. And yeah. Do that thing, you know, <laughs> but I kept telling him, I was like, look, I can't, I, I got, you know, oh, it's not that I don't want to be with you, sure. guys, I, I, but I have, I'm supposed to be here and yeah, you're yeah. expecting me. And they're like, yeah, yeah. You would have left somebody else hanging had you gone with these guys. So yeah, you, you had, you had to do, yeah, for sure. So um, I said, could you tell me where the SOTAX are, the TAC P? You know, and I was just naming names, and they were just looking at me like, we don't understand the words you're talking about. <laughs> you know, what are those acronyms? <laughs> <laughs> Playing dumb. So you're all right. um, they wouldn't let me, I, they wouldn't let me go to, I, I was thinking if I could go to Chow or go to the, 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 the head by myself, I could kind of, and they always had somebody with me. Really? Yeah. Wow. Well, they had, there wasn't a lot of us to go around at that point. Sure. And I think they kicked the guy off their team. Oh, okay. And they didn't get a replacement. That's what I understand, but I don't yeah. know if that's the, that's the truth. So, so, they, so these guys wouldn't let you go. So they're <laughs> kidnapping a young E-Tag. <laughs> so finally. That, but that speaks to how, how valuable E techs were back then. Like that was like, yeah. I mean, it was that, and that's not a joke. It's not that it wasn't, it's, we're kind of making light of it, but they looked to you as a, a, like a force multiplier. Like they couldn't do what they wanted to do without a guy like you. So you were extremely important to their, to their mission execution for sure. Yeah. I've never yeah. been that readily accepted onto a, any kind of army team <laughs> yeah, that yeah. quick. Just like, hey, you're my new friend. You know, <laughs> it's like, I, I don't know you, you bro. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So, well, uh, finally the tech P, uh, guys found out I was there mm -hmm. and they, they come and came and got me and uh, they rescued you. Yeah. They rescued me, but I lost my helmet, all my Kim gear in the process. Um, it, it was nuts. And then, uh, I run into rock Davis, Okay, and, you know, rock is just this gigantic guy. I was stationed with him in Korea. And yeah. so rock has this thing. Cause he's like, uh, you know, eight foot two. And right. when, he talk, when he talks to me, he you know he bends down. He's like, "Hey, Shrop, well, it's good to have you out here, brother." But uh, you know, it's like a little Hulkamania. You know, yeah. like, hey, hey, brother, we're gonna have some crazy times out here. But <laughs> sorry, bud, you don't have the two week train up, so you can't stay here. I'm like, Rock, I'm not trying to. I'm trying to get yeah, camp yeah. New York. And he's like, "Oh, okay. I know you kind of want to stay here, though, right?" Sure. Like, okay. Yeah. Good. Good for you. Good for you. <laughs> so. He gives me the sat phone because uh, it's Colonel Reisner on the other end and it's the slew of where the F are you. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so they send some people to get me. And then uh, just as we're driving into Camp New York, right, there's this big pillar of smoke. The chow hall burned down that same day. Oh, my God. And uh, just as a fluke or like, you know, I, you know how it is when you get over there, you hear anything from sabotage to uh somebody let a bomb off in there yeah, or, yeah. or the or the people that they actually had working where they were imbeciles and burn it down yeah so i went from running. working at the prince salton air base to chaos having mongolian barbecue every thursday to <laughs> mres <laughs> boom boom <laughs> out in the desert like what did i get myself into oh uh, yeah i but i couldn't have been happier sure or, or i was i was i was really looking uh, forward to it. Uh, you know, I'd already had, uh, quite a few years in at this point and I, you know, not, not trying to be a psycho or anything, but I was really looking to validate all the skills that I was taught. Yeah. You know, I'm that's what you. we're trained to do. Right. Right. Yep. Yeah. I was used to get, when I, when I first came in, <clears throat> Panama had just ended It's same with you, but I was stationed with a bunch of guys down in who were, who had just fought down there. They, they were uh, like guys like Eric Harris and Keith Ingram oh, and guys like that. Nice. And uh, I was like, man, I just missed it. I can't believe it. And Eric Harris told me this. He said, don't worry. You stay in long enough. You'll get into something. And just like you were saying, like it, that you just wait around long enough and you want to, you want to get, you want to like to try not to be a psycho, but <laughs> you want to, you want to do what you're trained to do. You know, you want to 
yeah, execute those. We're not skills, conscripted. So. We're we volunteered for this. Right, right. Right. So yeah, yeah. And and can I just say right. that uh, uh, what a what a privilege it was for you to uh, be around the legend that is Eric Harris. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> that guy, he he like he was. It was him. Like I said, Keith Ingram was the same way. But those guys were like. I learned so much from those dudes. It was, yeah, it was really, yeah. it was really, like you said. Uh, you had Blaine Brost as well, right? Uh, I don't did, know. Did he leave at that point? I think he might have left before I got there. Yeah, because he was at yeah. Lewis and uh, he used to, uh, he used to take us on, take us out on runs and just run circles around us as we were running. He's part oh, of the yeah. whole crew too. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing dudes. Uh, yep. So, so anyway, so you get to, yeah. you're in, you get to uh, your unit there in Iraq, you get to third ID. So they they uh, they were putting the 10th Mountain guys uh, everywhere, but so they but they they kind of coalesced a group of us with Third and Seventh Cavalry. Okay, right. So <clears throat> Mike Mike Keehan, uh, uh, Trevor Bradford, uh, uh, Kearns, Matt Aki. Okay, and, uh, me and there was another guy uh, named Hardy, um, and he he was my uh, romad. Okay, so. Um, so Aki, we didn't have anybody for Bravo Troop, but we had somebody for Alpha Troop, and we have some for Crazy Horse Troop, which the, those are the guys I was with. Okay. So, um, and uh, you know, I'm I'm looking at it at Third of the Seventh Cavalry, and I was like, Third of Seventh Cavalry, Seventh Cavalry, Seventh. Holy crap! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> from, yeah. uh, <laughs> All right, right. So, um, they had these um these little mini DVD players with the little screens. Sure. Sure. And, uh, yep. <clears throat> so these guys were constantly, you know, in the, in the little tent city that we had and, uh, we're watching, uh, we were soldiers. Well, it's the same yeah. unit, right? I mean, that was their unit. With the we were yeah, soldiers it was a 2002 unit. film. So that, yeah, it was, that uh, makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then and pick whatever other war movie, you know, getting themselves high to cross oh, the right, border. Right. But I'll tell you what, the spirit of the Seventh Cavalry guys was extremely high. Those guys want to fight. Yeah, <laughs> the best guys to be with. <laughs> nice. They really were. So and they were happy to have us. So then, uh, so how long did you stay there in New York until you guys moved out into like? What, what, tell me, talk to me through that. Talk, talk to me about when you first established contact with those guys until they gave you the order to start moving towards Baghdad. Man, so I think uh, it, it was the date. So we we had to move out of the tents because the 101st and 82nd came in, and they okay. didn't have vehicles really to sleep in. So we had to move out there. Oh, okay. And yeah, so we were sleeping on. Everybody was mad, right? Uh, because tanks. Are I mean, it's kind of it's kind of bogus. I mean, why not get more yeah. tents or something? But it, it, at least you had something to some sort of shelter. I, I was I was a guest. Uh, everywhere I went anyway. So it was All okay, right. <laughs> but we got our track. Um, they ran us down everything on how to drive it. And uh, just in case the driver, something happens to him. And, uh, and it was a great kid, man. But I, I think he came out of that thing like three times the entire world. Oh, really? really? <laughs> he was like living in there, like Gollum. <laughs> like, oh, so crap. <clears throat> so uh, that was uh, late. Was it was a late February. Yeah, I left there in February, got out there, and uh, so about two weeks of March, and then, you know, we get the uh, we get the orders to LD. All right, I think the nineteenth or twentieth. Yeah. Right? So the first the the first time we're kind of like posturing on the the border, and they, you know, we got a couple scud attack sirens, and uh, man, all that practice putting that Kim gear on. And I still couldn't get it on that fast. <laughs> it was like when you think you're really going to get gas, it's like, oh. yeah, yeah. You're... <laughs> and you got some old crusty sergeant major who's you know been you know sleeping in it since 1975. Right, so right. Been wearing it the whole time. Uh, it's probably part of his underwear now. So uh, we we uh, we get up there and you know they they breach the breach the berms and uh, with the. The cavalry, I wouldn't say we were the first across, but we were some of the first elements across because obviously the Cavs got to go out and screen uh, the for the flanks and then uh, get out there and scout the areas. Sure. So we were, uh, 
um, <laughs> my track. Uh, I don't know if you're a Star Wars fan, but it kind of made this Millennium Falcon breaking sound. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, here's the line, right? And the track goes over the line and here, right, Iraq, right here. They go, <laughs> and I'm like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> so I'm smacking this thing. I, I don't know. So I, I, I pull the, uh, um, the 17 out and uh, tell them, hey, catch up. And then I grab some extra batteries, some food, some water, and I get it. I, I got onto a, uh, a Bradley and then eventually ended up on a, on a mortar <laughs> track. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. So we were wow. going through the desert on a, I'm on a mortar track. <laughs> uh, well, at least you had some like organic fire support if you needed it. <laughs> you know, well, least, yeah, it's kind of crazy because the first, the first engagement we had, um, you know, was, was kind of crazy with that. Uh, I was hanging yeah. rounds too. Oh, nice. Uh, I had no idea what I was doing. And the guy was telling me how to do it while I'm holding a mortar right here, hanging it. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. I didn't think so at the time. Uh, <laughs> I was really tired. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> mortar tracks are extremely uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, we did, we did some good stuff. That was the, uh, the securing the canal bridges. Uh, that was okay. our first. So uh, the first couple of days, uh, I would say we didn't really see anything. I know the army was looking to do kind of a desert storm deal where they're trying to engage in the open because uh, our, right. our armor is amazing. I mean, sure. Just, just whack them at, you know, how many ever miles uh, they can do that. Right. Uh, but I, I, they wised up a little bit on this one <laughs> and they, they pulled way into the cities. Okay. Um, to force that damage. So that first engagement was, uh, the canal bridges as, uh, I'm probably gonna mispronounce this, a uh, Samawa. Oh, oh, yeah. I don't, I don't know any of the names there. I so, know. Right. I just, sounds like, good to me. <clears throat> it was, it was uh, near the, <laughs> <laughs> don't worry. It'll be in the highlights. In the right. Right. <laughs> so we, we get out there, um, and it's nuts. We're sitting out in an open field. Now keep in mind that we, we've never been in contact yet. Yeah. And, um, all of a sudden people just start shooting at us for no reason whatsoever. No. Yeah. It might've been like you weren't invading their deal. country or anything. Yeah. It wasn't a big deal. You know, it's like, what are you doing? Stop. <laughs> uh, I mean, mortars are hitting around us, uh, you know, and, and we're still just sitting in a field just looking around. Yeah. And I hear this, uh, this, 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 constant cracking and popping and i think the guy next to me is shooting at something so i keep looking at him but i don't see his rifle going off and i'm looking around looking around and finally i look at him and go what are you shooting at man and he goes what are you shooting at <laughs> i'm like holy crap <laughs> that's some dude uh by a building shooting at us I actually sh had a shouldered shouldered his uh his rifle and was blasting at us so i had a uh, uh, now I had a borrowed weapon from 50 day sauce and I, and I never zeroed it or anything. And I, they gave me the, the aim point. Yeah. And, uh, uh, none of that was sighted in. So I, <laughs> so I shoot back at this guy and we're just, just trading shots, just trading shots. Yeah. All this other crap's going on and we're just trading shots. And finally I ripped this thing off and keep shooting. And I, I must've got near him or something because he, he kind of did the duck and run and he took off. Or somebody okay. else shot at him or something. So I was like, oh my God. So I get one of my magazines out. I get my, get a round out, this thing back in and uh, see a dirt clump out in the field and start <laughs> sucking the rifle. Sucking it in. <laughs> this is a combat zero kind so of thing. So when you said you took something off, you took your aim point off and just started using iron sights or? Yeah. yeah okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 I, I wasn't. Uh, smart. I, I mean, that's smart. I wasn't, I wasn't familiar with it at the time. Sure. So I it was just like, I, I was like, man, I, it looks cool, but I, I think I'm going to just go back to what I know. Yeah, for sure. No, this is a smart move. Because, I mean, yeah. you, it could, you could be shooting way off with that thing. So at least or you know the iron was. sights are relatively close and you know how to adjust those. And, yeah, that's a smart move. Well, I, I figured, uh, and later on it did come in handy. <laughs> if anybody gets close enough to me, I'll, I'll take care of it. <laughs> sure, sure. So... <laughs> Um, so, uh, we, we kind of get close to, 
uh, you know, there's some soft dirt up here with the canal bridges and stuff like that. And um, uh, a mortar round comes just zipping in and just whap right in the dirt. And I was looking at it. I look at the dude next to me and I uh, just start laughing. Oh, it didn't go off? It didn't go off. Oh, man. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> so you get him like, back up, back Jeez. up. <laughs> back up. Get, in, get You know, I it was just a crazy day. So we, we finally we finally pull back and um I, i'm i'm in, i was trying to get air and i couldn't i couldn't get anything yeah i didn't even know what was going on right <laughs> so it was a it's a crazy first day so yeah, uh, yeah there's some other stuff too i finally got air later on in the day but okay and then the rest of the squadron got there and then and then the division started or one of the brigades started pouring in there oh okay. they were coming from all directions I mean, almost 360. It was crazy. I was like, does yeah, anybody yeah. know where they're going? Does anybody know where we are? Yeah. <laughs> it was nuts. What, so what was the deal? Was it, there was no guidance or anything? Or they, they just were just like, you needed to screen for the main effort? or how, like? Yeah, we were we were supposed to sec- <clears throat> uh, secure those canal bridges, right? Yeah. Uh, so that was the first city we were going to kind of engage, keep down while everybody else went around. Okay. Right. Uh, yeah. With and that's why one of the brigades and with one of the you know one of the uh, hammer hammer hitting battalions was going to go in there, but okay. man, it it was just complete chaos. There were so many restrictions, and then all of a sudden, there just wasn't. Yeah, it was it was nuts. So we we've pulled back, and <laughs> here's the special forces team comes out of nowhere in their little pickup trucks, right. <laughs> <laughs> they almost get laid up by a Bradley. Yeah, was, I imagine it was crazy. Uh, so, how did you did you have comms with those guys? How did you identify that they were friendlies? I didn't have comms with them. I, I'm I'm assuming, and I never asked that question, but I'm assuming they got on somebody's freak. Oh, okay. And and were able to identify because uh, once they you know they got a little bit closer, everybody relaxed and stuff like that. Because we yeah, just yeah. got them getting shot at and all this other stuff. And right, right. You know, everybody was kind of, kind of hyped up <laughs> sure. a little bit, you know, it's like, but I'm in a tank. You can't do that to me. Um, so yeah, yeah. Right. Guy with an AK <laughs> can do some, make you, make you have some second thoughts. Sure, so these guys sure. roll up and stuff. And um, I say, Hey, where's your, uh, where's your controller? And they're like, he's over there. So I go over there. He's driving the truck. I'm like, I'm like, Hey man, what, what's going on? He goes, uh, he goes, what are you? What are you? Yeah, like what, what I was like, well, I'm, I'm attack P. I go, I, I are you CCT? He goes, uh, I'm STS. I think he was really nervous because he had only been qualified as a JTAC for about three months. Oh, okay. So he was a, you know, he's a little nervous. So I yeah. said, hey, look, man, let's get on a common frequency. <clears throat> Talk to me. Uh, I'm experienced. We can make this happen. No matter where you are, yeah. reach out to me. I'll make it happen. I, I got where they were, threw up an NFA, uh, Keyhan and Bradford were there as well. And we had, uh, they wanted us to take out this building. Okay. And uh, <laughs> wow, what a disaster. Oh, yeah. um, 500 pounders don't work great on buildings. Big buildings. <laughs> <laughs> when you try to level the whole thing. Sure, sure. So we could, we could get the F-16s eyes on it. Uh, we tried to use a laser. Lasers reflect off of things. Tried to use that at uh, a OH-58. Uh, that didn't work out. Um, so they were like, hey, these got rockets, right? We're going to take the building down anyway. So it just, boom, slams a rocket in there. And then the F-16 is like, oh, yeah, I got that. Like about damn time. Yeah. So It's a good mark, yeah. So he drops the drops the first bomb. Doesn't do anything. Just duds out. Uh, they drop the second one. Boom. <laughs> Blows up on the top of the building. And then the, they come in for another attack and uh, they're lazing each other. Right. So the smoke pouring out of this building, <laughs> they hit the l- smoke with the laser and the bomb goes, whoo. <laughs> oh no. I'm like, Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily it landed into an open field. It, it oh geez. Damage or anything. 
And I was like, oh, my God. And the SAT is like, oh, yeah, we're RGB at this time. Oh, you think? Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, those guys are good. The NFA is still there. The, the no fire area is over the SF team. And we're just kind of just chilling out. And this artillery round, wham. Now, at this time, a lot of the brigade is like nut to butt, right? We're just all yeah, gathered yeah. up in this open field. This artillery round just bam. And we all just start looking around like jackasses. <laughs> and, you know, uh, command level hands are going to hips at this point. <laughs> right, right. Like, Is that ours or theirs? Is that ours or theirs? <laughs> well, it turns out it was theirs. <laughs> That was an adjustment round. And then they got oh, man. effect and they just started just throwing artillery at us. Uh, and it was crazy. So it was just yeah. going off everywhere. And now remember, I don't have a track at this point. I had a mortar track, but they've moved off into another location. And I was, uh, and everybody's like, so where were you? Just, were you just like standing there or where, where were you? I was standing there like... next to uh Keyhan and those guys. I should have just stayed there with them, but I, I was, trying to find cover in an open desert, you know? So we're yeah, an idiot. Yeah. So I'm running, trying to get, cause there's some dunes over here or, you know, built up hill dune yeah, yeah. area or whatever. I, I really don't know what I was thinking. It was just so much artillery fire coming in on us. You know, we trained so much to throw artillery at everybody else. Yeah. When it comes out, I think they were 122s, with oh, D30s, man. something like that. So, and then there's hammerness. So I'm running and I see this Bradley with his back down, right? And these guys are like, I'm like, okay, here we go, <laughs> force go. Jeez. And um, next thing I know, I I fell forward and just my helmet and my head just buried into the, the dirt. Oh. And I before you got to the Bradley. Before I got to the Bradley. Okay. And I was just like, I, I couldn't get my, I, everything was kind of moving. I couldn't get my, my wits about me. I didn't know what happened. And there's a dude, he came out like about halfway between me and the Bradley. And he goes, you're alive. Get up. Let's go. <laughs> and I'm like, I felt like I was running sideways the whole time I was to the Bradley. I get into the Bradley. There's so many other dudes in there. There's a Lieutenant screaming, um, where are my guys? Where are my guys? I need a radio. Where are my guys? And I, I'm, I'm, I'm still out of it. I can't focus on anything. And the, the, the ramp comes up like this. And I'm just smashed right here. And this guy grabs me, the same guy that came out, and he starts running his hand all into my vest and stuff, just touching me. And I'm like, get off of me. <laughs> <laughs> Checking just, you for wounds. Yeah. He told me, yeah, he told me to shut up. And uh, so – we fall back and uh, they have the medic come over and check me out. He's doing his thing. And, you know, I'm like, what, what, what happened? So I, I was, I was running. And one of the shells hit near me and kind of, I pitched forward a little bit. I, oh my God. I and you didn't even realize it. Didn't you just even realize you it. I just thought I fell. Jeez. So, and I didn't, I, and that's so they, they, uh, they had me uh, go down to almost my underwear so they could see. Uh, if you had any shrapnel had, or anything in you? Anything, yeah. And I did not a scratch. Really? Not a scratch. So now I, well, I will walk into open traffic just for the hell of it now. <laughs> you're like, you're untouchable. Yeah, so it's like nothing can kill me. Bulletproof. I, I, knock on wood. Where's the wood? Okay. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we, you know, uh, another, another JTAC, and I don't know who the guy is, but he got some A-10s and found those guys and they were still in the open uh the, that are uh, artillery battery enemy artillery battery and just just laid waste to them wow yeah so that's awesome they, they never bothered us again um, <laughs> i get back they they hook they link me back up with the uh, crazy uh crazy troop and um <laughs> here, go, here comes the special forces guys don't ask me how they got out of this <laughs> area i don't know anymore um so they get back and the guy goes, he goes, Hey, uh, were you one of the guys that were striking that building? I'm like, yeah, I'm, my head is killing me at this sure. point. And, uh, he goes, it was okay. He goes, where's your, uh, where's your CO? I'm like, well, the captain's over there. And captain's on a map. Right. So he goes over there, talks to the captain yeah. and, uh, they, they're exchanging words and stuff. And then they take off and uh, <laughs> I go over there and I'm like, like, hey, sir, what's going on? Huh? Crazy, huh? <laughs> what was that about? They're like, oh, he wanted to trade. 
their guy for you, their Air Force guy for our Air Force guy. Uh, I said, oh, I just left it like that. And I was like, walked away. Like, that's weird. So, well, I mean. Twice. It, <laughs> I was, was going to say, yeah. SF team. <laughs> it's like they see guys in action and they, they're like, that's who I want. That's the guy I want because you were competent. You were aggressive. You did the right thing. Obviously resilient since you <laughs> took an artillery round, like danger close. Yeah. Uh, still to this day, I don't, I don't know how close it was. I was close enough to knock me down, I guess. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but yeah, it's just, it's a, it's a real miracle that it didn't, you know, take a leg or God only knows what, you know, worse. no shrapnel at all. I mean, yeah, it's bananas. No. And it, and that, that was the consistent theme throughout the entire deployment with all of us. There was some guys who had some pieces of uh, metal from mortars and stuff like that. They were picking out of their arms, but that was about it. Yeah. And we got, we were, man, well, I'll get to that. <laughs> yeah. That all transpired, which was crazy. Uh, yeah, please. Well, so we, uh, we kept moving, right? Um, you know, and, and we talk about this, the, the Cold War guys talked about this a lot. Uh, like if we were to fight a Soviet style enemy. Um, the communications, man, it's, it's tough when every single unit is on the move, including your higher echelons. Sure. And uh, so there's a lot of chatter. There's a lot of frequencies and a lot of updates know, on where everybody is because there, there's no, nobody's really stationary. So yeah. Yeah. Right. And, <laughs> and that's why, you know, being with the, you know, 10th mountain with the frontline trace and stuff like that with those infantry guys, you know, I thought those guys move fast, but nothing compared to those, that armor. Right. Holy crap. <laughs> It's like, and, and you have to pull back, uh, you know, sometimes doing a strike. Right. Because they're moving. And, and if I just don't, if I didn't know, and I know other guys did the same thing, if I don't know for sure, I'm not going to do it. For sure. Yeah. I'm going to have to have some more, uh, you know, essay on where, where our dudes are if I can't see them. Definitely. Because I, that was my number one fear more than anything is, is, is killing our guys. Right. I, I can, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't think... I don't, I don't think I could have lived with myself after that if, I, if I did that. Yeah, I, and I, and yeah, I know totally I don't, agree. I don't say that lightly though. I didn't, I'm, I'm being serious. I was, it was, it would have been really hard. Cause well, yeah, really, I mean, that's like, like it, it almost are. defeats the, for every bad guy you kill, if just killing one good guy, it negates all that, all those bad guys. I mean, it's like the, the whole point of a JTAC or an ETAC at the time is to protect the guys we're stationed with, you know, protect yeah. the guys we're with. It's not, not to kill bad guys per se that is, but the, the, the real deal is we were there because the guys we're with can't, can't do it themselves. Right. They don't have the organic yeah. assets to fight the enemy. So if you're killing your friendlies, that's you're defeating the purpose of being there. So I totally <laughs> get what you're saying. I mean, that's, yeah. well, and then later on deployments, it, it came down to, uh, you know, Cass was more of a, if I couldn't, if I couldn't get something with close air support, directly maybe i could herd them into uh like a heavy weapons platoon or something like that somebody that else can take them out so um cast sure, sure. uses a maneuver asset so um sorry anyway i don't know no, please <laughs> no <laughs> it's good so um so i guess the uh, the the one event that everybody really talk talks about is the the sandstorm the night of the sandstorm uh which is where i got um the metal, uh, the silver yeah. star four, um, which I'm still surprised, you know, there's no chocolate in it. I tried to unwrap it the other day is <laughs> nothing in there. So we, we, we get up there and the, the majority of the calf squadron moves North. So later on, I find that this is, uh, all connected with the, the battle of on the job during the sandstorm okay. fight around the uh, 24, 25 March. I think that those are the time set. Um, simultaneously back in the States is my youngest daughter's first birthday oh. <laughs> that same night. And I'm like, yeah, well, there's a, dad, dad didn't want to die on your birthday. So <laughs> I guess it all worked out. Some more motivation for you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there was a, there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, <laughs> so get there, they move and we, we stay there. Uh, uh, there's two bridges uh, connected over the Euphrates and um, it was uh, objective Floyd. Mm -hmm. That was the objective area. And Crazy Horse Troop had to stay there and secure the bridges because it was the only thing that the, the armor could cross, right? At that okay. point. 
Well, obviously the enemy knew that as well. So uh, at this point, we hadn't seen any uh, armor or anything like that. They were hiding the, the Habarabi and the uh, Medina uh, cores were kind of, uh, were, either they were melding together, but they were also uh, kind of uh, hiding from us. So there was not a lot of interdiction to take a lot of this stuff out. So they were out there somewhere. Okay. Um, so we get across there. This, this sand just starts just rolling in, you know, a, a midday in the afternoon and stuff like that. And I'm like, what is this? It looked like the, that movie, the mummy. <laughs> just oh, yeah. But later on we find out it's like the, the worst sandstorm in 40 years. Whoa. But that always goes with these things, right? It's like the worst winter in a hundred years, All right. the worst yeah, sandstorm yeah. in the last 500 years. Um, <laughs> right, it's right. Just nuts. So it, the visibility is just down to nothing. Um, everything's orange it's it's super yeah. weird so we're just kind of sitting in a circle there's a looks like an abandoned police station uh right next to us and uh it's a it's a, it is a true intersection true intersection like this and right before you get down to the river so we had a kind of a, a security on the the bridge and okay. uh and for I mean, it's been it's been like this is a, this is 20 years ago. Right, right. <laughs> uh, it still feels like uh, it's uh, fresh in my mind sometimes, and uh, uh, but it's a sequence of events. So, sure, sure. Um, so I'll do the best I can to not bore it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, we get it. <laughs> it's a so, long time ago. <laughs> it is a long time ago, and and it's crazy because I'm only 25. And <laughs> right. uh, it's so, so weird. Yeah, it is weird. I, so we get over there, the sand's rolling in and stuff like that, and then it kind of just it kind of crescendos. The guys just start popping up out of nowhere. They were under the bridge. They were in hide sites. It was a weird mix of guys dressed in civilian clothes, which I imagine was the Fedayeen kind of dudes yeah. and uh, Iraqi police, stuff like that. Wow. And it just built and built and built. And then they were just on us. And it was just small arms fire everywhere. <sighs> RPGs, small arms fire. It was nuts. And yeah we're sitting in elevated positions because we're on top of the armor <laughs> and right, right. off the armor shooting <laughs> just to keep fighting. Uh, they start running vehicles down the road with just like those, those little weird Mercedes freaking trucks with the engines underneath. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Congo looking trucks. Yeah. yeah. And uh, they start running those right into us and uh, guys come spilling off of that and, you know, just, just shooting and shooting and shooting RPGs, just crisscrossing everywhere. Uh, Jeez. The volume of fire was so high that it nearly snapped every single antenna off the vehicles. Jeez. That's insane. That is. That is insane. Just a chance of all those. Yeah, I mean, just, oh, my gosh. I know. I was just like, <laughs> so we get this one particular truck. Uh, just happens to uh, come through and <laughs> they, they obviously get the driver and, and it, it, this, this dumbass just ended up in the wrong place. And the Bradleys just start working the coax and the guys are just firing at this. They're just eating these dudes up. So one guy gets into the intersection and now Aki had given me a bipod for my, <laughs> for at this point when we met up right, right. Uh, a little while ago. Um, and so I had it sitting here had the H250 handset, kids. We didn't have the damn ear things. <laughs> <laughs> Hell tours. So I was like, hello. Uh, got this thing going. Magazine in, you know, ready to go. You know, we were already popping dudes that were getting too close. This guy comes right out in the intersection. Um, sees me. I see him. Not very far away. I don't. I just look at him. And then just, ta -ta 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 -ta, just, just starts right off from the hip. Yeah, yeah. And I don't remember really hearing a whole lot. I remember feeling things, <laughs> not sure. like bad feelings, but uh, just it was it was like a weird disturbance in the air. Right, right. And I didn't even realize I was pulling the trigger too. Yeah, yeah. He goes down. Um, I don't have the handset in my hand anymore, <laughs> and I'm like, holy shit, holy shit. <laughs> and what was the deal that you shot out of your hand? No, I just, just dropped, dropped it. it. I oh, you dropped, dropped it. it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't okay. shoot out of my, that would have been a cool story though. It's like, yeah, there's uh, there's five things or five things you should never do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Look like a shop teacher from the seventies. Uh, right, right. So, but my SACOM antenna uh, kind of 
kind of bent over a little bit. Oh man. And I'm like, God dang it. So, and I was like, Oh man, my guy. So they had given me an army dude, another army guy, uh, another soldier. Okay. And he had a saw with him and they gave me a 240 and about four AT fours, claymores, grenades. And I'm like, give me another soldier. Cause this is crazy. I'm not, I'm not right. This crap. Um, yeah. So this, this kid was awesome. So, uh, but I turn around and my romad, <laughs> this guy, they'd gotten down cause they're smart. And he's like, yeah. did you get him? I'm like, what are you doing? Are you helping me shoot these guys? <laughs> so I'm like, Hey, you, you got any more in that saw? And he's like, yeah. He's like, I put some more into him. He's like, Gah. comes up like that, comes up, ricochets off the road, almost hits one of the BCs. And I'm like, okay, stop. It was nuts. Cause we were just so close into each other. Yeah. 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 And, uh, it, it, it's just crazy. So we run out of ammo. Almost everybody runs out of ammo. Right. Jeez. Completely black. We start picking AKs up off the dead. And I had like some rounds <laughs> M9. Which I know some people like that thing, that Beretta, but when you're a, a small guy like me, it feels like I was like, yeah. <laughs> I was like oh. <laughs> so I go over there, grab grab his AK, grab another one, strap this one on, boom, boom, boom. I'm running back. Um, I, I pop a couple rounds <laughs> M9 back at this dude and somebody else that was coming up, and uh, there's a guy that's climbing up one of the tanks, like, kah, 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 get him, um, get back to the Jesus. vehicle. Oh, it was nuts. Oh, and I don't God. know, you know, and it's not like the movies cause, uh, you know, bullets bounce. Oh yeah. <laughs> Everywhere. Oh, right. Right. <laughs> so dumb. Right. And you guys are like so tight. Yeah. yeah I can't, oh man. I can't nuts. imagine the chaos. Oh, it was, it was complete chaos and the radio's going off. So the, the antennas are pretty much down, but everybody's, you know, working. So I get, I get the, I take, I take the hundred mile hour tape. Yeah. The greatest thing ever made for man, right. by man, for man. And luckily the, a lot of the components in the, the wiring wasn't really damaged. It was the casing and some of the, um, you know, wires and stuff sure, sure. and get this thing up in. I look at my guy and I go, <laughs> Warhawk, Warhawk, this is Advanced 5 7 radio check. We're just listening. And it gets that garbled satcom, like, <laughs> yeah. know, it's like uh, it's a Warhawk, have you loud and clear? How me? I have Lima Charlie. Holy crap, thank God. So I said, uh, I said, hey, man, we're, we're surrounded. Um, you know, they're, they're, they've overrun us. You know, we're, we're getting black on ammo. I need, I need something I can't see, but I need, I need anything you got. Sure. And they're like, okay. So they just start sending me everything. I mean, everything. I mean, I was stacking them up. I couldn't see them just running them in, just hitting around us. Right. Yeah. yeah. Just, just nailing. And I was trying to crater the roads too. So they couldn't bring the, cause they're trying to take fuel trucks and run them into the tanks. Oh my like God. One of our, main uh battle tank so the one of the abrams shot one of these things right before it hit him and just whoa <laughs> it was nuts oh it's my crazy. god and I, i'm laughing now because the absurdity of all this going on in such a small space sure right? sure uh and yeah it's it crazy so oh. yeah so we're, we're fighting they're still just Everything's flying around us. It's, it's it's the dust and the sand is everywhere. It's all over us. It's in your mouth. It's everything, and and you, of course you're breathing heavy. Your adrenaline's yeah. up, so you're just just sucking in uh, beautiful Iraqi sand. <laughs> so I'm dropping, I'm dropping. This one guy checks on with uh, uh, Wickman, one hundred threes, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, I think that's what it was the cluster munition wind correctable, right, right. A clutch it was like a 87, but I think that's what it was. Uh, but it was the wind correctable uh, type. And, sure, sure. And I'm like, oh shit, I've read the J Fire, <laughs> but I've never. At that point, though, J Fire's out the window. I mean, <laughs> right. Just, well, that's what I was thinking. I was everybody's like, well, all I've around read you. the J Fire, but I don't know if that's going to be cool or not. So yeah. I'm talking to the captain. We're, we're cross talking, boom, boom, boom. And he goes, Hey, I think they're trying to come up. He goes, look on your map at this location. There was a dry Creek bed kind of area because the river was so close that maybe it fed into, and he thinks they were coming up there. And I'm okay. like, Hey, so that's, that's pretty close. 
And he goes, I know. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so this had him drop there. And I mean, cluster munitions at danger close. Huh? Sucked. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. It was terrible. <laughs> Cause I kept asking him questions too, right before I cleared him. Uh, I was like, Hey, uh, this is where we are. He's like, yeah, I got your brother. Don't worry about it. I got you. Don't worry. I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> Golly. So, uh, I just kept going and going and going. And, uh, my Romad at one point, and, and it's a little out of the timeline context, but at one point he looked at me and he said, uh, he goes, are, are we going to die? And man, I, I wanted to be, I really wanted to be profound and I really wanted to put his mind to ease, you know, cause this is your troop and stuff. Sure. And all I could come up with was mm, probably. It was there was no bad. way around it. I, I knew we were, it was that bad. That you it was really that like bad. This. I thought we were going to just, I thought we were going to die. Oh my gosh. And I said, so then I try to be the cheery NCO and I said, but I mean, if we kill 50 or hundred for each one of us, that's a pretty good day. Huh? Nice optimism. This is like a, <laughs> the ultimate optimism. <laughs> that's a glasses half like, full kind of you, guy. You're right? You're not going to see that on a kid's show, but guess no, what? No. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're going to die, but we'll take about a hundred of them with us. So it's yeah, all that's, good. That's totally worth it. You'll probably get into heaven over that. Those are good numbers. Oh Those God. are really good numbers. So That's, that, that illustrates just how bad, like if anybody wasn't getting it until now, that right there illustrates how bad it was that you're like, no, this is probably it for us. Like we're not, we are not getting out of this. Yeah, we're that, good. You, you had to, I mean, not even, it wasn't like you were scared. It was just like, man, it's, this is, it's just a fact, man. Well, that's so the crazy. weird thing too. I, I wasn't scared. Yeah. I wasn't afraid. Um, I had made my peace. Sure. Um, beforehand. Right, uh, right. Just in case. And, uh, you know, I, I, it, it, like I said, we, we weren't conscripts, we we're volunteers. Uh, that, that's part of the risk. And, uh, if we could take those guys out, which will become relevant later on here in the story here in a second, <laughs> what right. I was about to do. Um, but, uh, and I will say this though, that it wasn't till after that, after I got back was when I got scared yeah. and had problems. That was that, that happens was after, dude. after everything wore off. Cause I had a job to do. Nobody needed me to fall apart. You know, sure. we, we had, we had shit to do. Right, so right. it wasn't until, you know, when you're in a relaxed setting and everything is going great <laughs> and you're sitting there just watching cartoons that you're like, Oh my God, <laughs> what just, well, it's like all those feelings that you compartmentalized mm -hmm. They didn't go anywhere. They're still there. Yeah. So now you have now you're in a like you said in a calm situation, a controlled environment. Now all those things come out, and you're like, "Oh, that's what I should have been feeling." And you start I mean, having those residual feelings that are, yeah, I can imagine, man. I, oh, oh, I, yeah. I can't Ch imagine really. Chaos is so much better. Chaos yeah, so much you don't better. have time to think about this crap. Yeah, yeah you don't have yeah. time to think about anything else. So, um, drop the bombs. Drop the bombs. Um, <laughs> so. They, I get this call that there's a, that a couple guys got into that little building we were next to. Right? Okay. And, uh, I looked at the soldier that was with me and he wasn't with me, with us for very long. It was a, kind of a, you know, one shot deal with, with him. Uh, he was a yeah. 12 Bravo or something, an engineer. Something okay. Like that. And, uh, I said, I said, crap. I said, well, somebody go get him. And they said, well, we're busy. It's like, obviously. We're all busy. <laughs> right, right. So I said, well, man, I got to, these guys could throw a grenade into the, you know, into the track at, at some point. And uh, so I looked at this guy and I was like, do you, do you have any room clearing training? And he goes, no, sir. I'm like, God dang, man. Neither do I. <laughs> you know, what do I know? Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, so I, I, look, I looked at my romad and I said, uh, I said, hey, man, if something happens to me, this is what we're doing. And he goes, well, don't go. I, go, I gotta go. I go, unless you want to go. He was like, no. I was like, okay, then I'm going. <laughs> so I make his stuff up and I know there's uh, my buddy, Joe Hahn and a couple other guys that are probably seals and some <clears throat> guys are probably like cringing right now when I tell this story, but yeah. um, we got, I said, okay, we're going to go in. And I'm going to go this way and you're going to go that way. And I said, if there's anybody in there, cause he still had like half a can in the saw. 
Sure, I said, sure. I'm just going to, I'm going to take a knee and you just like hit the room. <laughs> I said, we're not using grenades though, because it looks thin in there. Yeah. He, yeah. Goes, he goes, that sounds like a great idea. That's a horrible <laughs> idea. That is a terrible <laughs> idea. <laughs> no one should have backed me up on that. <laughs> but yeah, here we were. Right? Hey. You were doing your best. I mean, I was doing the yeah, best I, mean, I had. You know, you knew that I mean, threat had to be eliminated, so you figured it out. Yeah. Man, I'm about eliminating myself. So, <laughs> so we're going there, and there, it wasn't a big place. So there was only maybe, maybe, maybe three rooms, right? Yeah. Uh, maybe a little connecting, uh, kind of a pseudo hallway into a room, and we're going, we're going, we're going, and get in there, and the the there's nobody in there. Now my heart is up in my throat, sure. and I've got my nods because I don't. This thing's broke. Uh, I can't, I've got to hold my nods up like this. Oh my God. I would have, oh right? I would have given anything for a flashlight, but at that time we didn't really have a whole lot of equipment. Sure. No, of course. Remember, we didn't, yeah, yeah. we didn't have a whole lot to operate with. Um, right. it was, it was going to certain places, but not every place. So, yep. uh, in an armor unit, you're not really going to get all that cause you're not supposed to be doing that stuff. Right. Right. But here we are. I know <laughs> I, so, not to, I don't want to get on the soapbox, but that was my biggest complaint about all that stuff i was like a, a jtac should have each guy it should be you should have the same kit regardless of where you are if you're soft armor light whatever it is that way we can mix and match you guys but yeah i, I was anyway i don't want to get off oh, on no, a tangent, no, it's but, okay because okay. you should have had all that things kit. i didn't i didn't have anything because i went right from psab out to there that's a good point too so yeah borrowing equipment and yeah do i we eventually uh, got that changed for future ops for our guys. And I think nice. that's, that's one of the best things that we've ever done as a JTEX. We got them uh, physically more fit. We got the right uh, doctors, the right equipment for them. And, yeah. uh, you know, of course, none of those uh, young buds are going to thank us. Right. Because you're ungrateful. Exactly. You ingrates. I hope you're listening right. to this right now, you ingrates. Uh, <laughs> just kidding, guys. I love you. Um, so I, I, you know, we make our way in there, right? And there's, there's nobody in there, nobody in there. There's a dog tied up on a desk and this dog is pulling this desk. I mean, it's lying. And, uh, I'm like, man, I am not getting bit. So I whap, whap, whap. I've never fired a weapon inside a building without hearing protection. Oh my God. <laughs> my ears were ringing. <laughs> That was the dumbest thing ever. Oh. Uh, but so those guys weren't in there. It was just the dog. They, they, they got, I, yeah, I don't even know if they were actually ever in there. Oh, okay. So it, there was just so much flying on the radio and stuff. Sure. Like that. So we get back out there. Like I said, this is the timeline's a little wanky, but this is kind of the gist of the context. But meanwhile, you're like deaf from like shooting a weapon inside a building. Yeah. No ear pro. <laughs> it's like, come on. Uh. You know, or I probably got a concussion from artillery earlier that week. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, it was a good time, man. Good times. So we're, you know, we're fighting, we're fighting, we're fighting. Uh, then drop bombs, we run out of ammo, we get, we get their weapons, you know, all this stuff. And, um, all of a sudden it just gets quiet. I just, just dead, dead quiet. And all you can hear is the turrets back and forth. Just looking. I had all these aircraft up at one point. I had an F-14 come up and say, Hey, uh, I'm, I'm a qualified air fact. Do you need help? And I was like, God, yes. <laughs> Which I ran Please. into that guy at NTC. Oh, no kidding. Him. Yeah. He was an awesome guy, man. Oh, Once you man. found out, you know, who each other were, uh, cause he was the, uh, the assistant to the, uh, seventh fleet commander. Oh, okay. And then he just dropped all, you know, formal stuff. He's like, Oh my God, brother, how you doing? Are you? I'm so glad you're alive. I never found out what happened to you. And I'm like, yeah. Oh my God. How crazy. So, yeah, it was crazy. So, um, eventually all those aircraft left. It was super quiet. It was raining in a sandstorm. So the, I think at one point I just looked up at the sky and I was like, Really? <laughs> like what else? I mean, come on, right? man. <laughs> what it's not bad want? enough. So they, they, you know, there's a little bit of a lull uh, in the battle, and uh, they, you know, they start asking, "Hey, send us a casualty report each section." Zero, 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 zero. Black on ammo. Really? Like zero. 189 guys. Not one freaking casualty. I love it. I it, love it so much. It's insane. It's divine. Yeah. 
it's that's the only way to explain it, man. It's just it's just nuts. How does that happen with that I mean, much stuff going on? It's crazy. It is, but it has a lot. To, it has a lot to do with you guys and who you were. You you yourself, you know, drop have, having control of all that aircraft. I mean, I'm sure once the bombs started dropping, a lot of uh, fighting spirit on the enemy side went out the window. I'm sure they're like, okay, this is it. We're it's no more like force on force. I mean, we're we're up against you know aircraft now. So I well, wouldn't be surprised if a lot of them bugged out because of it. You know. So that's so, amazing, yeah, dude. It's super quiet. Right. And then we get this report. There's armor moving in from the West towards us. Now the ASOC was trying to hit them, but they were kind of jumping from kind of an urban area to urban area. Yeah. And they're moving towards us. So that all those dismounts that we were taking on and stuff, uh, I think they were trying to, they were uh, fixing us. They were uh, fixing us in place uh, and keeping us there. Right. Uh, okay. now, I don't know if they thought that we were, I know we were kind of a part of a feint, but I don't know if they thought we were a main effort. Uh, we probably, to them, we were probably fighting hard enough to be like a brigade. Yeah. <laughs> so it was pretty crazy. Um, so they, uh, uh, they're, they're moving out, they're moving out. And, uh, you know, they, they, they got them on the J stars. They got on the E8 queuing. Um, I'm like, oh, how many are there? It's a lot of them. Um, it's like, holy crap. I'm like trying to figure out what I'm going to do. All the aircraft are gone. There's no more aircraft. And I said, uh, I said, Hey, can you get me anything? And they're like, well, we're still trying to figure this out and figure that out. I thought, cause we What's had to got, figure out. It's like, you, you just went through all this stuff. Well, yeah. Oh, man. One guy got on there and, uh, and I'll, I'll tell you that here in a second. Cause it, okay. It yeah. I don't want to cut you off. That just seems like no, I'm, no, like, no, I'm on the edge of my seat here. Like, could you give this guy some more cast? Jesus. I know. So, um, before all this, we, we were getting a lot of false hits on radar for camels and we would maneuver in on camels. Oh, okay. So I had to tell the captain, I was like, Hey, uh, I might need to go check this out. These are not good choices, by the way, going into the building, going to do this. These are not, these are choices that are made by someone who's never been in a situation like this. So yeah. I was by well, the seat of my pants here. I was like making shit up. <laughs> <laughs> you ever hear those guys on uh, the Band of Brothers guys uh, when he crawled up in the tree to shoot at the? And he sure, sure. Do that. Not, not when he I was seasoned, eventually he would never do that. But yeah, yeah I was yeah. making a lot of wrong life choices that I got lucky with. So <laughs> I grabbed me and a couple of my best friends, and uh, when I looked on the map, man, that's it's actually pretty far. Yeah, but it didn't feel that way. So we were sticking to the roads because we could still see the road. Get out there. Now, what they were doing is they were marshalling right in the open field, getting ready to press across the bridges towards us. Okay. More likely, that's what they were getting ready to do. Yeah. Um, they 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 knew if they mixed it in with this, that would probably negate our uh, force multipliers like aircraft, stuff like that. Sure, they sure. didn't realize is that we didn't have anything left at that point. <laughs> they yeah. weren't launching GCAS or anything like that. I'd used everything, right? Wow. <laughs> So I can't believe um, they wouldn't even give you something though, knowing that that other, that tank, those tanks are out there though. You think they, they were, were trying though. They were trying. Oh, okay. I'll okay. give them that. They, they were trying it. They were just, there wasn't a whole lot. The sandstorm was huge. It yeah. was affecting everything. Oh, but okay. Everything yeah. that I had that I was using at that point was already in flight before it hit. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, so nobody could take oh, off. Okay. Right. Yeah. yeah. It was, it was really bad. So nothing okay. on any of those uh, elements, uh, ASOC or anybody else, they were, actually doing a great job they were they were working their butts off to try to get everything that we needed oh, okay and from what i understand um this the satcom radio was the only long haul communication we had left yeah. everything else was taken out so the captain comes over they clear the uh they clear the 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 air force net the jarn to let the captain talk to colonel farrell who just retired as a three-star by the way because awesome dude called him yeah. terrible terry farrell he's a perfect cav commander right so he's like uh you know hey sir we're 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 down on this we're down on that you know we got nowhere to go we're trapped you know we got this armor coming in and then farrell gives this amazing speech from what i understand it's one of the best speeches ever like motivational yeah, yeah. my boy blue kind of thing and uh over the satcom over satcom and all these tech p guys heard it 
and I never heard it. <laughs> I never got to hear it. <laughs> All yeah. I got to see was the captain's reaction. He goes, I guess we're staying. I'm like, okay. I go, so, you know, let me confirm. So we'll go over there by the road. It's just this, like I said, it was dumb. It had to be done because, you know, I have a, I mean, somebody had to, yeah, confirm what well, it was. Or, yeah, I have a medical condition called stupid. So <laughs> uh, it's an advanced It's not your fault. Yeah, yeah, it happens. <laughs> so we go over there and uh, the, the dust clears a little bit and I, I see a Russian tank. And I'm like, oh, and I kind of hit the guy next to me and he goes, what's that? And I'm like, go, 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 go. <laughs> These dudes are, they know we're there now. They start rattling off a, probably a disco or something like that because it's thumping, 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 thumping. And, uh, but it wasn't near us or anything. So thank God. And we're getting back. We got a, we got a Brad and, a, and an Abrams on the bridge, right? And I'm like, as I'm running across this, this, this road, I'm thinking, oh my God, if they see us running towards them, they could shoot us. So I do the best thing I could think of. <laughs> Kind of like a Team America thing. It's start yeah. yelling, I'm American. Oh, my God. There's a survival at that point. No, I mean, There's a survival like, at that point. Yeah. So I get on the radio, and I'm like, okay. They, it's confirmed that they're, that they're there. But, and I don't know who it was, but somebody got on the radio and asked me, are you sure they're not trying to capitulate? Those are the words he used. And I'm like, huh? I go, no, they're not trying to give up. They just shot at us, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, nobody, sh- nobody tries to give up by shooting at you. Yeah, it's like, oh, sorry about that, my friend. I give you Brother Price. You want this, huh? <laughs> That's my best Iraqi. Sorry. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> It's yeah. crappy. Um, <laughs> so there's a B-1 on its way home. There's a tanker on its way home. So they put the peanut butter and chocolate together, and it turned the sucker around, and it checks in with me. And I'm like, oh, thank God. Now, I talked to the guy I was talking to on the radio later on in life, and he said, uh, he goes, you know, I didn't even authenticate you. He goes, you remember what you said to me? And I said, I, I said, I don't, I don't remember. He said, well, we checked on, we did our uh, fighter to fact. And he goes, you came back over and said, sweet. It was 12 GB 30 lines. That's authentication enough. That's a th- Yeah. He didn't even try after that. I, mean, I was like, man, I don't even remember saying that. I was like, I, w- I had been up. It was so, I was so tired. Everybody was tired. We were beat. So, you got this tank force out here, right? That's awesome. And I'm like, okay, they're real close together. Um, from the guys who were in Desert Storm and the guys who fought uh, or were preparing to fight in the Cold War, the Fold of Gap scenario, I, a lot of like Chief Carpenter and stuff, guys like that. Um, those guys actually, in those scenarios, would teach us how to fight surrounded because you were going to get overrun anyway. So you yeah. just got to keep fighting. So that's where I learned a lot of that stuff. So nice. when they were uh, they were sitting there, um, I wanted to drop one JDAM kind of middle front of them, and then so many seconds, uh, two hundred meters west of that. And if they get overwhelmed in the front, I figured with their tactics, if they're consistent with the tactics they always used, yeah. they were immediately this this back element would back up into it and at least scattered enough to break up any momentum they would have coming over the bridge. Smart. I told the captain that, and he goes, it sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> Just do whatever, man. Yeah. <laughs> at this point. So, you know, that B1's got a wheel around. He's a, he's a big boy. Uh, he's coming around. I said, hey, give me a five-minute out call um, once you get in place because I got to get everybody to button up because it was it's pretty close. It was right across the river. Sure. And uh, I said, okay, everybody button up because in the five minute out call, uh, I think I said clear to engaged, uh, clear to engage. Yeah. Um, but hey. there was no type threes back then, but I think I said clear to engage. I don't remember. Sure. Sure. Um, so <laughs> first one, first one drops. And I mean, it just turns everything. Cause they're still sand in the air and just like back and forth. <laughs> and I'm like, Oh my God, that's so cool. It's so <laughs> close though. I yeah, yeah. Some use close. What the hell? Yeah. Uh, and then the second one drops and then it's quiet again. So this time, instead of me running over there, we said, they said, Bradley, <laughs> now, smart. before we went out, I, I trained these guys to not give me grids or anything like that. If they see a crater or something or a bomb go off, give me a, a kernel direction and a distance. Smart. Just wag it. And yep. that's what he did. 
and there was a, another force follow-up force i did it again dropped four of them all together and uh broke up that home momentum nice of that force then another jtac called me and was like hey you got any bombs left uh because <laughs> there was another tank column coming down right for us oh, so man. i passed uh so we had i used four so we had eight 31s left i passed it off to this other jtac and he uh he took out that other armor force and then that was it um do you remember who do you know who that was the other I guy can't remember man that's all right i wish i did i should have wrote it down <clears throat> i was i was too busy trying to like <laughs> freaking just live uh yeah yeah should, for sure for sure uh, <laughs> so jeez um, i know it's crazy so we were supposed thank to god that b1 one. was like in i mean oh man oh so here's the crazy thing about that b1 right uh what is his name uh he's a retrainee the master sergeant right he's coming out of the school for a while and um his him and his wife were b1 crew chiefs right well his okay. wife uh worked on that b1 that thing Hidden. was supposed to be hard broke her and her crew worked on that thing and that's why the only reason it was up that night wow if they hadn't done their job and, and that's a, you know, when, when we go talk to somebody or talk to a group of people to go talk to a group of Air Force people, you know, no one should ever feel bad and say something like, well, I didn't really do anything in the war. Are you kidding yeah, yeah. me? Are you kidding me? Oh, yeah. How many lives that her and her crew saved that night? Amazing. The ASOC guys did their job. You know, everybody was doing their job. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree. I'm the same way. I'm like it really does take the whole entire force to, to do that. Cause, cause I mean, you would have been out there flapping if it hadn't been for those jets, but then those jets wouldn't have flown if it hadn't been for those guys on the ground and just, you know, the whole cycle. So yeah, the absolutely. whole chain is, is responsible for it, but yeah, yeah. that's amazing. That's really cool. It is. And that's a uh, Hamill. You okay. know him? I don't know. I don't think so. Yeah. This is, it was his wife. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I, you know, she, she's forever going to be one of my heroes. <laughs> nice. So, and he's okay too. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's awesome, man. So, uh, you know, uh, daylight hits, right. And I, I guess we that's could, another thing I can't, this whole thing was at night. Like it's yeah, like afternoon just, all the way. It was all through the night and right, oh right. When God. that about that ended it, it was only about another 30 minutes and when the hit the daylight hit us or so. Jeez. So it was all night hours wow. hours of fighting and uh so we're we're all sitting around like zombies yeah and uh there's just there's just dead everywhere it's nuts when yeah. the light hits it i mean it's just holy crap and there were people walking there's civilians you know people with kids yeah. they were hiding and i think that's what a lot of people don't realize you know we <laughs> We kind of glorify combat to some extent. There's a lot of innocent people that get caught up for in sure. the crossfire. People are living <laughs> there. And yeah, yeah, so this guy with his family, horrible. We, we tried to get, we get, we give him as much food and water as we could spare. Yeah. Um, and then I see this guy walking, right? And he's got the, got the Arab kind of long, long dress on. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it's called. And, and I'm kind of looking, and he's got black boots and green pants. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> and I said, hey, come with me. A couple couple of my best friends, heavy hitters, and we we nailed this guy. He was a Republican Guard guy. Was he? Was he trying uh, to sneak out of there? Trying to sneak out of there. Yeah, Went yeah, the wrong yeah. way. I think he was probably just trying to get the hell out of there. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was a lot of Jeez. overwhelming force. So – uh so I had, I had mentioned to those guys that, uh, cause you run out of things to talk about. So it comes down to like, what's your favorite part of the MRE? Uh, All right. and I'm a big fan of the fudge brownie at that time. Sure, sure. And, uh, I had went to go talk to the captain and I came back to my track and there must've been a dozen MRE brownies in there. <laughs> <laughs> it was what a great feeling man amazing i'm telling you yeah had it not been for you having the wherewithal to, to keep your head and, and like control that that cast i mean it could have been a lot worse man it could have been a hell of a lot worse so 
man, good on you. That was well, awesome. they were, uh, they told us like, so we were supposed to be relieved so we can move on. And they said, no, you got to stay there a few more hours. Yeah. Then we get this report that 10,000, 10,000 vehicles are making their way towards us. And I'm like, what? How do they even muster 10,000 vehicles? There's no way. Yeah. I was trying to confirm this, confirm this, confirm this. And uh, we were going to be the first ones that they hit. Yeah. They coming down, right? So <laughs> I know, right? So I'm like, oh, my God, we don't even have ammo. Uh, yeah. I'm looking at the AT4 going, I, is it just one tank per AT4? Or can you get two shots? <laughs> this is like a video game, right? Right. Um, so I look at my roadmap. I'm like, okay, let's let's kind of do similarly what we did here. I'm going to start building the matrix and kind of TRP in uh, all the grids for JDAMs, right? Uh, yeah. Because we did pretty well with them the night before, you know, using them on moving targets and stuff like that. So I figured we could do a numbering system down. They come down and the captain said, how, how many can you get? And I go, I don't know how many I'm going to get, but uh, I know they're going to bleed all the way down here and it's going to be bad for them. And we might be able to break up their attack or at least stop it. So, sure, sure. Um, <clears throat> Alo gets on, right? I don't know who this guy is. Um, he goes, he goes, I'm the senior guy and uh, I'm going to, I'm going to control this first. I'm like, you're not, this is, I'm going to control it. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. control any cast that comes near me. Cause it's that cast, right? Close air. Right. Right. Yeah. And uh, so we're going back. He was going to try to control finally, it from the talk. I don't, I don't even know where he was. <laughs> right. He could have been eating it in a defect somewhere for all I know. So <laughs> it's like, Hey, I want a metal too. Uh, yeah. You know, no. So the division gets on there and says, no, I have it. Right. So finally, um, nothing. I don't hear anything else. And it, it apparently was a false broadcast. Oh, okay. And I'm like, Oh God. Yeah, no doubt. Thank God. Even if, even if you did have all the cast in the world, it, that doesn't mean that they're not, some couldn't got through. I mean, you guys are already oh, yeah. had just gone through this battle. I mean, the last thing you needed was another yeah. giant battle, you know? Yeah. Well, uh, I did promise to tell you something, uh, <laughs> that I don't, I don't tell a lot of people this, uh, but it is relevant. So when the armor, not the 10,000 vehicles, but the, the actual armor that I hit with the JDAMs, mm -hmm. uh, when we were talking about that armor and I didn't know they had two choices. The enemy did, they could have fallen back like they did, which worked out for us, or they could have beat feet across that bridge and mixed it in with us, which would have taken us didn't negate at all cast and anything like that. Yeah. At least they would have thought so. The The number one uh, worry was that they would get our tanks and our brats. And so there was a plan um, in place uh, that I was going to try to trick the B1 crew <laughs> into expending all ordnance on our position and take us all out. Oh my God. And, it's not a noble thing um, and it's not a, um, a selfless thing to some extent. What it was, was uh, we needed to win and they couldn't have our equipment because they could have done more damage to Americans, uh, our fellow fellow service members with that equipment. Yeah. So uh, from what I understand, uh, and I don't know this for sure, but there was a lot of people listening to that SATCOM radio <laughs> because it was one of the it was one of the few times uh, since armor has been in that situation where they were almost taken out on an, an armor unit was taken out a, a U.S. Wow. armor unit. So I think people were really paying attention to that situation. Man, that makes a lot of sense because that it was yeah. that's a tactical decision you they had to make. Oh my God! I, what it man? Yeah, it sucks. Um, well, I you're you're amazing, dude. I can't I can't believe it. That's this oh, is no. It, I, I'm I'm you, just that I, was an, all I did was just uh, I I did everything I was supposed to do. I made a lot of mistakes. Um, I chalked. You've it had 
ton of stuff on your shoulders, though. I mean, it could, I mean, God, well, I'm only five six. That's I keep it keeps pressing me down. So <laughs> that's amazing. Well, I had oh. good leadership, man. I had a lot of motivated guys. I, I I was never a the greatest tech P. I was a C student. Uh, I was never the best. I was never the worst. I uh, just got put in a situation, and I think that's a credit to our career field to say that, hey, any of our guys can be there. And it it, it goes into the metal, too. Um, I, at first, I hated that metal. I hated it. Yeah. They got a lot of guys talking trash, uh, which I don't know why that happens. Uh, yeah, it seems weird. It, it happens, right? I, it comes with the territory. Like jealousy or something? or. I don't know if it's jealousy. A lot of, I don't know. Some guys thought, you know, I've heard dudes say that they, that, that I didn't deserve to be there, but they did. <laughs> you know, I've heard that one. That's oh out of, dr- that was out of drunkenness though. That's okay. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay. You know, I just don't take it personal anymore. Um, so, well, I had to do something with it. I didn't want to be arrogant or anything like that. What I wanted to do with it is I had to come to terms with what, is a medal what is a valorous medal it is a it is a historic record of a standard that is set so not for necessarily the individual but for future generations to look at and go this is the bar exceed it yeah meet it or exceed it and that's really what it comes down to so uh when i went to ntc as an oc and i had an amazing crew of guys and we implemented our combat experience in there and we would get emails back from dudes saying, Hey man, this, this save our ass or this or that. And, and you feel good about that. Cause that's what, yeah. that's really what it's about. You know, you do your job, get in it, do the best you can with it, pass it on. Yep. Cause we're not going to be in the tech P or the air force or the military for a thousand years. We got to pass the knowledge on. <laughs> right. That's yeah. You're almost obligated to, pass on your experiences so they so hopefully nobody gets in that situation again or if they do they know how to kind of get out of it you know be you better. set that example on how them to get out of it yeah, yeah and be be, exactly maybe do it a, a different way to right maybe avoid the hardships you had yeah yep and yeah. i and i i'd always told uh tell my guys especially you know all the mistakes i made um which is you know you have to or, or wear it like you a got, badge you, you know yeah you have to i mean nobody's perfect and if you if you hide those mistakes, you're just, you know, making sure that somebody makes the same mistake later on. You know, if you're not yeah. highlighting that and saying, hey, dude, don't forget, don't do this or whatever, you know. Yeah, uh, super yeah, proud of sure. the guys that worked for me, uh, that I had a hand in training and uh, did way better than I ever did in the, yeah. in, in those theaters. Um, so super proud of those guys. And then they moved on and great lives and great dudes and great families and, and hopefully saved some guys. I, I tell you, I got summoned to uh, a procurement hearing in 2008. Right. Uh-huh. And I had to sit behind the chief staff, of the air force. Right. So they could get more money face of the air force. Oh, oh I gotcha. hated it. Right. So, <laughs> and it was, it was, uh, it was general Mosley too, right before yeah, he, yeah. The, the, well, before he got retired. Yeah. And, uh, so uh, there's these guys in the Capitol building these veterans and they wear red jackets, they wear their medals and stuff. Right. Mm-hmm. So I noticed in DC, when you wear your uniform, people mob you because they think you're part of the tourist attraction. Right. right? It's, it's nuts. I hate it. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm walking and uh, we, we stopped at one point. And I'm just kind of standing there and I see this old guy kind of staring at me and I look over at him and he's staring at my medals and stuff. And uh, I look at his and he's only got two rows but he's got a silver star and a bronze star of valor. <laughs> and uh, he walks up to me and he goes, he goes, Hey, what stupid shit did you do to get that? <laughs> and I said, Oh, you know, he got surrounded. We had a far way out. I was like, uh, how about you, sir? He's like, well, I was, uh, I was in the battle of the bulge as a rifle company commander at like 21. And uh, you know, he's, he's talking about, and we didn't have a lot of time to talk, but I just felt like, going, Hey, here you go. Have that. Yeah. One. Yeah. But those are the dudes. But man. how cool is that, though? I mean, how cool is that to like you shared you can share that experience with that guy because you were essentially in the same kind of situation, you know, like you were you were in a, just an just an incredible situation that you both endured and you both, you know, were heroic in. I mean, that's got to feel pretty good to be able it, to share that with a guy like that. You know, it really does. I, I love sharing uh, and, and, and just not combat, but all all anybody in the service, man, you can always, uh, sure. you can always find a funny story or 
or something shared yeah. or some shitty food. Um, right. But it, it is is really amazing. Uh, and I know a lot of these World War II guys and Vietnam guys and Korea guys are, are, are starting to go away now. And uh, definitely um, anytime I, I see when I'm wearing a hat or something, I go and make an effort to talk to them because yeah. we, we owe them. We owe them that. And uh, sure. hopefully when I'm wearing the hat someday, everybody will just leave me the hell alone. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. They come up to you just like you did. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's just, and it, it's, it's crazy, huh? And yeah. uh, 189 guys in that situation and not one casualty. <laughs> That's all amazing. That. We, we followed on. Uh, there was quite a few other engagements. Yeah, please. Yeah. Let's go. Let's keep talking. Yeah, tell me about uh, so that happened. You survived, and uh, yeah, tell and I me can about tell you of of little funny things that happened. So sure, my, sure. My track breaks down again, right? Because it's a piece of garbage. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and I end up in the B fist uh, with uh, Lieutenant McCormick. Right, he's the he's the uh, FO or the you know fire support guy for uh, Crazy. Right. And um, I'm sitting in the turret of the Bradley. Right. So we start getting hit again as we're coming up the road and uh they're shooting us shooting us well dude they had parked this stupid thing on the side of the road so they hit those guys coax right so here yeah, comes yeah. the truck with all the ammo they hit this thing it blows up and starts cooking across the road oh my god McCormick, he looks at me, he's like, he's like, close the hatch, close the hatch. I have no idea how to close a hatch on a Bradley. <laughs> right, yeah. I, and, oh, and if they're, if, if it's super simple, I, I was, I was like, you know, just yanking on this thing. Right. I got my arm up like this, you know, my, uh, my left arm up. I'm yanking on this thing. It's not moving. He's yelling instructions to me as we're getting ready to go through this thing. Cause it's yeah, just yeah. a ball of flame across the road. And this piece of shrapnel from the uh, from the shells or whatever it was, whack, right next to my arm. I mean, he put oh. a dent in that thing. And I pull my arm back, and he goes, just get in the bottom. <laughs> get in the bottom. We go through this. It's like, Ugh, with the flame and stuff, and we just keep going. And I'm like, this place is crazy. <laughs> Jeez. You're like, I just got out of something. I got Now I got to deal oh, with this? Nuts. Well, I kept the AK for a while. No, why not? Yeah. Yeah. Why not I have a backup? Back. Uh, they, yeah. uh, they piled them up and stuff. So we're going down the road. Uh, this is the dark sense of humor that manifests itself with all this stuff. So we were going out to screen. This is, we were getting closer to the airport and uh, Baghdad and stuff like that. And uh, um, <laughs> so we're going up objective peach. I don't know who's naming these damn things. But I feel like yeah. he was wearing chiffon underwear or something while he was naming <laughs> these things. Floyd, Peach. Yeah. It sounds like a breakup. Yeah, Peach. Peach. Oh, right, right. right. But it was a hard <laughs> fight. So one of the battalions had already gone through there and just smashed these guys. These guys were taking ZSU uh, 23 twos and they're putting them on the bridge, uh, firing direct fire. And uh, this uh, this battalion just, just messed these guys up. So it was yeah. just burnt up. ZSU 23 2, and there's just a uh, Republican guard soldier, and he's kind of charred up right on it. But he's got like clean boxers on. It's the <laughs> weirdest thing. So we're so passing, weird. and I, I look at my guy and I said, Man, his mom would be happy he's got clean underwear on. And nobody <laughs> laughed. Nobody Aww. was in the mood. But I th I was like, It's kind of funny. That's like a stretch of perfect time to say that. It's yeah, a perfect like time, a, right? It's yeah, like, like, Oh, man. Thank you. Thank you for wearing. Yeah, that was a uh, very well timed for sure. <laughs> very well. So we we get we get to this uh, we get to this place and uh, uh, I'm sitting on top of one of the Bradleys, right? The B fist Bradley. Yeah. And uh, everybody's just kind of moseying around. Everybody, like I said, the place was secure for the most part. And there's kind of a drop off off the road, and there's a little like a uh, water canal, kind of not a canal, but a, like a little little bit of water irrigation possibly uh -huh. and i see these uh, three republican guard soldiers that are dead down there but they got a bunch of crap with them so i'm like hey something smart i'll just go down there and see what they got you know <laughs> so i go down there i pick up one of the rifles i'm looking at it guy grabs my ankle and says water 
One of the guys grabbed your ankle. <laughs> the guys, one of the Republican guard guys, grabbed my ankle and says, "Water." And I'm like, uh, "I can't remember how many curse words I spewed out, and or how many times I locked that rifle <laughs> back." My so I, I stand him up, right, and I kind of get him over there, and uh, and I kind of kick the other two to see if they're if they're alive. They were they were actually dead. This guy was just kind of hiding out, and uh, so I'm looking at oh him. My God. Yeah, and I got an AK on him, and and I can't remember the word for come here. <laughs> so I start going, cough, kiff, cough, kiff. And he's just looking at me like, like, like those are what you would say those to a, a deaf dog. And I was like, huh? So I'm like, come on, come on, come on. So I notice he's got a shot in his uh, left thigh, and it kind of blew out a side of the buttocks right there. It oh. looks like it. But he's he he was and he was laying in that nasty water too, yeah, so yeah. I get him up to the top of the the road. Everybody's just walking around, and I got this Republican guard guy. I'm like, hey, I got a guy yeah, here. And I said, uh, yeah, and that's what it did. I go, I go, hey, uh, I got a prisoner. A couple people turn turn their head, and uh, I'm like, yeah, hey, uh, uh, what do you want me to uh, process him, or you know, what's the deal here? <laughs> so they come running over. And we had this guy's name was uh, Bennett, right? And he would he would used to sit on the five seven seven track, which is kind of like the FDC track. Yeah. Um, and he was a ranger, but he he got hurt, so then he just you know with conventional forces. But uh, he would sit up on that damn thing with a white feather and just knock dudes out that were trying to run towards the vehicle or you know whatever. The guy he was awesome, but wow. So he comes <laughs> running out like Monty Python, like the Lancelot running across the field, and the guard is just looking at him like this. He is running down, jumps up, kicks this guy right in the knee. This guy goes down. And I'm like, hey, man, he's, he's, he's wounded. He's like, yeah, now he is. I'm like, no, no, seriously wounded. He's like, mm. actually shot. <laughs> yeah. So we flex, you know, flex cuffed him, uh, you know, got him all situated. I said, I think he speaks English. And I start trying to talk to him and, he, he only knows a few words, right? Yeah, yeah. And so I get him some water and uh, he won't take it. So I drink some of it to show him that I'm not trying to poison him or something. And he, he goes yeah. down, he starts yelling Shakran. So I get the medic over there. Uh, sure enough, they, they pack it what they can. And uh, we send the coordinates to the MPs, left him there. That's so crazy. Um, God, did you buy? crap your pants when he grabbed you oh my <laughs> god <laughs> yeah. i i mean it was, it was oh. nuts you know you try to think that uh you know you got all this you got all this firepower you got all this training you're you're a tough guy or whatever and it's just like i i thank god i don't remember the noise i probably made made like this like <laughs> <laughs> Bro, you almost jumped out of your skin oh my like, god oh my yeah god. i wasn't ready for it man i should have just yeah, of course too you know it's like come on man oh my god go. Yeah, he, he scared oh. the crap out of me, man. I, I'll admit that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was, for sure. It was pretty bad. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> Good times, though. Yeah. Yeah. It, it made me a little, uh, after that deployment, it made me a little uh, careless. Yeah. Some call it brave. My second deployment uh, was with a guy, a bunch of 10th Mountain guys that had never deployed before, and people started shooting at us. I was, I was like, okay. <laughs> it happens, dude, for sure. Yeah, you get really. Uh, I guess you can kind of call it complacency or what, but I mean, you you get comfortable and you just, yeah, it doesn't bother you at all. That, yeah, in your subsequent deployments for sure. Well, it uh, it definitely manifests itself later on in life, doesn't it? For sure, <laughs> in other ways. So, uh, so if there's anybody out there listening to this, uh, get help. Talk to somebody. Talk to a bro. Definitely. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of guys talk about that kind of stuff, and, and we we touched on it just a minute ago. But like, we don't realize how th that stuff is still in there, doing you know, just kind of like me sitting dormant or whatever. But you, you, it needs to be dealt with in some way for sure. And if I think that's a problem with some guys is they don't ever deal with it. They just kind of like keep trying to suppress it and compartmentalize it, and it, and it just it really festers, I guess you know. So. Yeah, I uh, my the late later part of my career, um, I tried to deny it. Yeah. Um, but I and I wasn't drinking. Uh, what I did instead was I ate. 
Yeah. Which was just another way to deal with it, right? Yeah. And uh, so I just, you know, I keep it off for a little while and then back on, you know, just getting bad and bad and bad. And then uh, about a year out of retirement, I was over 240, which is a four. And how five, tall are you? Five foot six, yeah. Yeah, five six. Yeah. So um, what kind of changed things for me um, is a couple things. But, uh, you know, I had a dude. Uh, Julie was bringing in groceries one Saturday afternoon, right? And this guy just walked into our house. What? On a, uh, so, you know, most of us project our reality and that uh, a break in or something like that is going to happen at 3 a.m. I'm going to get the AR and the vest out and like be a hero right, right. and stuff like that. And it's like, oh, Wolverines. Yeah. And at 4 30 in the afternoon, and the guy, uh, was had grocery bags in his hand so <laughs> he wasn't mentally stable uh a couple people said well you should have shot him i'm so glad i didn't yeah, uh, yeah he yeah. was just just wasn't in the right place in his head right and uh so but i went after him and we went through the front door fell on the front lawn i, I was grabbing his ankle he got away and i felt like i was gonna have a heart attack and i'm like this is ridiculous I am so out of shape. Oh, because the physical exertion. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm yeah, going yeah. to okay. die yeah. if I keep this up. And uh, not to mention that I never felt so lonely in my life because you you go through all this stuff with a team. And now here I am yeah. as an individual trying to combat this. I'm completely I'm woefully inadequate to any challenge that comes down the road, no matter right, right. how quick of a draw you are. Yeah. So I found a I found a gym, I found a CrossFit place. And before anybody poo poos it, Shut up. <laughs> it's not a cult. It's a culture. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> but no, they, they are terrific people. Uh, Coded native. And then, uh, and then I was like, man, I need, I need some more. And then uh, join uh, MMA place uh, pride and, uh, you know, with Lovato's and stuff. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, now uh, my uh, brother said, well, you traded food for working out. <laughs> Hey, like, that's still a lot one's better. A little, yeah, one's better yeah. than the other. Yeah, for sure. And, and it's the chaos. It's the chaos that helps. Uh, it's, yeah. it's I, and I, I'm sure you're the same way. It's the you're comfortable in the chaos and uh, miserable in the quiet. Yeah, something. There's always got to be something going on that you have to be. Yeah, challenging yeah. yourself or doing something that's. Yeah, I'm with yeah. you. Yeah, terrible. You feel you feel very uncomfortable in the calm and the silence and yeah. For sure. That's why in church I have to fart. <laughs> it has to happen. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and they understand, I'm sure. You know. Yeah, oh, that one old lady though, she keeps eyeballing me. I'm like, hey, it's you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, I just sort of. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's that's about it in a nutshell. I went to NTC and then uh I got out uh Went to Fort Bliss. Uh, it's great guys. Uh, had uh, old uh, uh, Ch- uh, Chiazza and Jared Taylor work for me for a little while. That oh, okay. Yeah, that was fun. Jared, yeah, what are you yeah. doing? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, nothing. We're making a t-shirt company. Oh, that'll never work. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So much for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's my Microsoft. Like, why didn't one. I get in on that? Yeah. Oh, uh, it's all right, man. <laughs> I. I I love those guys, man. Uh, they do they do such good work. They do a lot of good work for um, you know vets and tech B and stuff. Oh, too. for sure. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. So. JT is like he's very uh, active in like helping out veterans organizations and just like and not and and uh, not only organizations but just guys in general, like individual yeah. dudes trying to figure it all out. Kind of like we're talking about, like guys that are struggling with any some sort of mental health issues. And I know he was talking about like doing something like going to the to the to Congress and, you know, mm-hmm. talking to those guys about it. So yeah, he does a lot for the community for sure. Yeah, he's got I, don't think he, with that, so. I don't think he quite gets the recognition for it sometimes. I think people forget how involved he is. I don't think so either, with, man. I, yeah. uh, I don't know what I was looking at. I was bending down there to scratch my knee. There's, I don't have a picture of Jared Taylor up here or anything like that. <laughs> so so you it's, say. All, it's in the bedroom, but um, right. <laughs> it's on my side of the bed. So, yeah. <laughs> no, Full size uh, yeah. uh, pillow. Yeah. So it's a, it's, it's a life size pillow. <laughs> but no seriously i don't i don't think he I, I think people forget like how much he actually does do for the community so 
Yeah. He should be getting some recognition yeah, I, for that. But. I like him. He's okay. <laughs> he'll he'll do. He'll do. He calls me up every once in a while. Like he'll he he threatens me with things. Like he said, uh, you know, he said one time that he was gonna if he ever became successful, which I'm I'm afraid now because I hope he doesn't remember this. <laughs> yeah, he's he's there he was, now. So he was gonna send me like uh, an old VCR a month or something, just for the hell of it. Uh, you know, they were gonna like do this thing. Uh, I had this little gas saving car. It was a Ford Fiesta at Bliss. They yeah, yeah, yeah. called it the uh, saw, the, the Schwab assault wagon, and they were going to get it run <laughs> over by a tank. Um, it, it's just always messing stuff because I yeah, it was yeah. always spun up with stuff. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> but it's all good, man. It was a lot of fun uh, having him there, Chiaz and a, a bunch of the other guys. And then uh, I got a, um, I got an opportunity to uh, go over to uh, Air National Guard. So I did 22 years. Uh, an act duty and then uh, was a superintendent over here in Oklahoma. Uh, oh, nice. and, uh, did, did a little bit of time over here and then uh, was like, I'm done. Yeah. Got to, got to E8 and uh, I just, I was done. And I was like, man, yeah. I could probably stretch it out to E9, but I'm just going to take that away from somebody who's actually going to do something with it. Right. Right. And, uh, and in the guard, it's a little different anyway. Right. Because they, it would it's more like a position at that point rather than the rank. Or uh, well, they still got to have the, they, you still got to meet all the qualifications and you get to get the stripe and stuff like that. So for sure, for sure. And you actually have to enter a uh, Thunderdome like arena uh, with other senior NCOs and fight it out. So oh, no, I, I didn't realize that. Wow. It's just a rumor. I mean, I can't <laughs> confirm that. No, actually the guy sitting in the, uh, uh, the E9 uh, billet, uh, super proud of his Larry Mansell. Uh, you know, he's over here. He, he worked up at the DC for a while and, uh, he's doing fantastic work over here. A super oh, cool. smart guy, man. And fantastic cool. hair. I mean, rivals JT. Rivals. Oh, really? Wow. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It is great then. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I can't imagine what the chest hair looks like. So, oh, I'm sure it's, it's glorious. glorious. <laughs> yeah. So no, I was talking to Q earlier about the guard and he, he was like, that's the best kept secret out there. You know I mean? You, oh, it's amazing. just, uh, so you can do just as much as you were doing, if not more, you know, on the, on the guard side. So, yeah. yeah. So if, for anybody who's thinking about making that decision, it's, it's a good decision, especially with the, I would, I would venture to say that the stability is one of the best things. Like if you don't want to move around, if you're at a guard unit, that's where you're going to stay. I mean, you don't, it's not like, the yeah, and you can move around. To, I mean, if you want to go to Georgia or you want to go somewhere else or something like that, you can do a transfer. I mean, no, it's, it's not that tough. Um, and uh, a lot of dudes do move around from place yeah. to place. And, uh, and so we still get, uh, a good group of guys, uh, going through and, uh, you know, it's just like any other thing. Uh, the, sure. the, the factor with the traditionals though, is, uh, it's, you know, you gotta, you only get so much time to train them <laughs> All right, right. and then they got regular jobs. They got families and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, they go from civilian to, to tech P operator. Yeah, in a, in a couple of days, and they do the transition amazingly well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you would see. It's got to be challenging, man. And just to you know, oh, but that's if you're not living that life, all great the time. though. That's why they yeah. can do that kind of stuff. And then they're hungry to just do whatever you want. And then right. most of the time, at that point in my career, I was just hungry. Yeah, yeah. For food. That's a good point. <laughs> right. So. <laughs> <I'm joking. laughs> God. Well, what what was uh there was something you mentioned uh t- talk to me about um hex cam yeah what's so, a, 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 an initiative or something i'm not familiar with it so yeah, please tell me about uh, that. so hex cam usa uh so it's a it's a camouflage pattern okay, okay. um and it was designed uh like with a three-dimensional element to it so if oh, okay. you look at the hexagon um you find it in a lot of natural uh patterns out there in nature yeah or at least two uh <laughs> but actually what a lot mean, or two yeah, one or two i don't know maybe a beehive i don't know um <laughs> so uh when you when you're kind of straight on with this thing well, the way it's layered <clears throat> and the way it kind of uh breaks up the pattern without having to stick out or anything like that it could still be on a two-dimensional uh spot but have a three-dimensional okay. element to it and it's it's really good uh-huh. so we've got some very uh, functional patterns uh, that blend in with the the specter and the wasteland and stuff like that. 
And then we've got some uh, fun patterns, uh, which people like, like Himalayas and, you know, Pikes Peak and stuff like that. So we've, oh, okay. uh, we, we do a lot of licensing with the pattern. Uh, so we don't really produce a whole lot with it. Uh, we license it out to other companies and it's, it showed up on a lot of good stuff like a uh, two pood, uh, put it on their weightlifting belts, uh, showed oh, up at the yeah. games and, uh, for CrossFit and, uh, you know, a bunch of other stuff. I say what's real popular right now is with the, it, they put it on Kydex and then they make holsters and oh, knife, okay. knife stuff out of it. And it's really cool. Uh, so we're, we're still building it. Uh, we got a little setback with the COVIDs <laughs> when yeah, everybody no was doubt. on super lockdown, right? <laughs> Man. Yeah, I know, right? Don't bring up the unmentionable, but <laughs> I took it. I took the wind out of a lot of people's sails. Let's put it that way. Yeah, yeah, but you know, with uh, you know, and, and um, partners with uh, Steve Mangum. Oh, cool. Yeah, so uh, good deal. Great guy. He's uh, he still cracks me up some of the stuff. And I'll tell you what, that's a guy to have uh, on early days of Airborne because that that dude can tell some funny stories. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to talk to Steve. I haven't yeah. talked to him in years, but it's been probably yeah. a decade or two. Yeah. Yeah. It's, he's got some, he's got some great stories, man. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I actually heard a story. Do you remember the legend of the green frog and it got shot up? Uh, I, I do remember that story. I don't know much about it though. I met one of the dudes that was actually there. Oh really? Yeah. He was an enlisted tech P and he eventually became an officer. Right. So for those who don't know, the green frog was a gentleman's club, if you can call it that in Fort Walton beach, I believe. Yeah. Bring your own by beer. Herbie. Yeah. It was definitely it was the D not... team on. Yeah. It was like, not the double D, but just yeah. <laughs> the cesarean section team. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yeah. So the guy, um, I think the guy's name was Gunner, which fits, oh, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, perfect. Yeah. So he goes in there and it's one of the early competitions, right? He goes in there. We all know the story. He goes in there. He thought he gave the girl five. He ended up giving her 50. He wanted it back. She didn't want it back. Uh, she wouldn't give it back. So he goes out to his trunk of his car. He gets a, I think a, like a G3 H and K and some other stuff and just goes in there and just lays waste to the place. Now he's under the table with another tech P and they're like, hey, should we rush him when he's reloading? And he's like, no, he's not after us. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he gets in his car. He takes off. Obviously, we all know the story. He can't, can't outrun the radio. Of course, he tries to yeah, get yeah. through the gate at Robert, and they, they nail him. So he sits in a, a jail cell, right, waiting. The day of his trial, um, no one from the Green Frog shows up because – more than likely, they were probably running some illegal stuff out of there anyway. So they yeah, yeah. Meet, right? So right, they let right. him go. So he goes back to his unit. And they're, they're just like, well, man, what are we going to do with this guy? So he just disappears for like six or eight weeks. They can't find him. Yeah, yeah. And he comes back and he's like, yeah, I just uh, I decided to just uh, go to Vegas and blow off some steam. And they're like, well, that's AWOL, so you're out of here. So yeah, yeah. they kick him out and nobody's ever had contact with him ever since. Just That's gone. a risky move, kicking him out. I'd have been like, okay, everything's fine, dude. Don't worry about it. Because, I mean, he just shot up a, a <laughs> <You're club>. right? <laughs> like, don't make this guy mad, dude. Especially his last up. name. Jeez. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. So like, His name is Gunner. Yeah. Just a, just a great story, man. But uh, there's all kinds of stories, man. I'm glad you're doing this podcast because it's uh, oh, yeah. there's a lot of great stories out there. I know I want to hear them all too. Again, I can't thank you enough for coming on, man. I mean, it was just amazing. I mean, I really, I really appreciate everything you've done and like, you know, coming on here. It's, it really means a lot, man. This is the kind of thing I'm talking about. Like I want to make sure I, we capture a bunch of these tech B stories because there's guys like you and guys like, you know, Crosby and Aki and these guys are just like crushing. that just did amazing things. Yeah. You know, I want people to make sure I want people to know about it. You know, I want people to hear your story. So. I can't thank you enough for coming on, man. I appreciate it. Oh, I appreciate it, man. Thanks. And I don't think we were ever stationed together, were we? No, I don't think so. Um, we did run into each other a bunch of times, but yeah, okay. we were never actually in the same unit. But Man, dude, <laughs> I appreciate it, man. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah. this, this was a lot of fun. All right, man. All right. All right. Hey, thanks again. I appreciate yeah. it. And, uh, and I'll, I'll talk to you later, man. Thank you. Out here.